soundtracks and everything. Yep. <clears throat> did you actually download one, or do you do you just go on the website? I downloaded one. Okay. I I I've never done it before. I didn't know if oh. you could just do it on the website. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, not on YouTube, but there's one that's called. Uh, it's it's literally called YouTube to MP3 converter. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty useful. You just gotta be careful. There's a lot of like spammy buttons that you shouldn't click, but like yep. for the most part, it works great. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Uh, I I'm glad I'm always learning from content creators. I feel like I've been talking to a lot of content creators over the past month or so now. Uh, my one buddy was just telling me my uh, friend who uh, is part of Loudstone Productions, Abra. He said that they used a uh, Fiverr before, and I need to check that out. Maybe we can actually get a song for the podcast and a proper intro, you know, sometime in the near future. Okay, like our own little custom tune? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I have an app. I, I think I might have told you before, I have a little program that can make music. I, I am by no means a composer, so I'm not very good at it, but I can come up with a couple things. But I'm not sure if you want to be, if you want to be more professional. Yeah, we might need to... Uh, I think it'd, help. I think it'd be cool to have like a song, and you know, maybe they do like voice drops, like with your hosts, Game Bro Core. You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Another another thing I was thinking of was us doing like a little miniature, like a miniature compilation of like some of like our funnier moments, kind of like sound clips. Oh, that's like, a good idea. Yeah, like us doing like the Frank Reynolds voices and like us laughing, and then just. Uh, you know, make it like a six second, a six second intro, but just kind of like a, like a quick thing of like some of our funnier moments, and then they can like end. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I, again, I'm just just shooting out ideas of like how I kind of pictured it, but you know, we can always come up with, or we'll we'll, we'll decide what's uh what's the best I, option. I thought you actually meant like what I've seen other podcasts do, where they'll clip like funny bits from the episode, like oh, here's a good segment in the podcast, and it's like you know, ten minutes, and it's just clipped out there. Or even people will animate certain sections of podcasts, you know. Yeah, we can do something like that if, too. If we ever got to that level, God forbid, there was like an animator following us, and they they do a little cartoon. That'd be crazy. That's I would, cool. I would love that if that would ever happen. Yeah, that would that actually would be a that'd be the dream. I mean, you're getting there. You you're making your cool little avatar. I I need to make an avatar. I don't know what my avatar is though. I mean, I like your little the the face you have on your Game Bro Corey logo. Yeah. So I mean, you can probably like expand upon that. I do like it, but my only problem with it is it's just a clip art graphic I got on the editing software I use. So I kind of oh, want to okay. actually like create my own thing. I kind of just used okay. a guy with like glasses and facial hair, but yeah, I'd like to actually draw something. Okay. Well, I will admit, like I'm not again. I I think I have some creative skills, but I would never say I'm an artist. So, like my the, the, little, the little figure I drew, I I actually took. Like, or I went on Google, typed in like cartoon cross arm, and like I just found like people who had cartoons with that like with that like pose. And I'm like, okay, cool. I, I like this. And then I basically would just kind of like draw over that. That's kind of like how I made yeah, mine. And then, that's how you do it, though. Yeah, yeah, I I uh, improvise, but I think it turned out pretty well. It's again by no means professional looking, but I think it's a lot better than the uh, than my little vault head thing. I kind of ditched that because I mean I think the vault head was kind of funny, but it was also really easy to draw. That's kind of why I went with it. But sure, yeah, but now I think it turned out. I think it looks a lot better because it it just looks like it actually it kind it kind of looks like me. Ooh. I have a good idea for you, and you can use this or not if you want to. But since, like, your moniker or your little catchphrase is where cardboard is king, what if mm-hmm. you made, like, a little crown out of cardboard? I was actually considering getting Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards, like, bulk, yep. and making, making a crown out of that. that I thought work about it before. Too. And I, in the middle of my video, I can be like, welcome back. And I'll be like, where cardboard is king is I crown myself with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely consider that. I'll do that, like, at, like a, maybe at, like, a subscriber milestone. That'd be like, great. When we get the, like when when I get to a thousand, I'll I'll put on the. Oh, that'd be funny. Whenever I'm doing like a real special video, I'll be like, all right, guys, I'm getting the crown out. This is an important video. <laughs> I just or something like that. I don't know. The the next step after that one, you have to make like the the Game of Thrones like Iron Throne oh or gosh, whatever out of Yu Gi Oh and Pokemon guards. 
And then when I sit on it, it just falls apart. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny that I could be like, what do you expect? It's cardboard. <laughs> but that is, that is actually kind of funny. Or I could always like, that'd be kind of cool for like, again, maybe like an avatar. Like I, I can draw that or something. That'd be kind of funny. I don't know. I'll have to be, I'll have to be creative later. For now, I'm kind of happy with the way the avatar looked because uh, I do know somebody who has uh, skills like you with graphic design. So I, I know you used one of those graphic. I, I guess Photoshop, or I'm, I'm I'm not quite sure what you use to make the level with me logo. All uh, the, but uh, all the stuff I use, it's called uh, Pick Monkey. It's a oh. browser editing software. It does oh, okay. have a uh, premium, like there's free version and there's a premium, and I did buy the premium version. Okay. Because I yeah. use it a lot. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I was considering of investing in one of those programs. Because right now, I, I'm just using Microsoft Paint. And it it gets the job done, but it's you know, obviously pretty uh, <laughs> it's pretty amateurish, I guess. But the cool thing is that it lets me do chroma key or, like, green screen. So that way I can, like, kind of like my old avatar, I can actually, like, properly, like, move him around and put him on top of, like, other... Like, make him, like, the top layer on, like, like a thumbnail. So that way he always is, like, up front. So yeah. it, it gets the job done, but... Yeah, I get what you're saying. I, for yeah. me, like the way I alleviate that is, I just make a uh, version of either my head or a logo I want, and I make the background just uh, like uh, what's it called, transparent, so that I can just throw it on, you know, whatever I'm making. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, there is a way. I think I do have a, another program. It's it specializes just for pixel art, and there is a feature how you can make it. It's it, you can make it transparent. Like it's, but I don't. I don't think that a Microsoft Paint has a transparent option, except where you make the background one color and, and then just yeah. treat that as, as like a chroma key, and then, and then it does the same thing. So, But anyway, yeah. Right I do, now... I do. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, I was just, just going to wrap up that, like, yeah, like, the main reason why I chose my new avatar look, because I, 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 I didn't think it fit with my banner on YouTube, because a buddy of mine from uh, Ireland, actually, he uh, made me that... Uh, like the the, the the gray, the black and white and gray uh, banner for my YouTube saying where Carbert is king and that little like vault. He, he, he actually drew like a vault with like a Yu-Gi-Oh card and a Pokemon card in it. It was pretty cool. You, you can see it on my YouTube. And uh, But I, I didn't really think it, it meshed well with my blue vault head thing. So that's why I went with the new look. And then I, I made like a grayscale option of that and I put that on the banner. So that's kind of why I, that's basically why I ended up changing it like in, initially. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. I, I just wanted to explain that. That's why I chose that. Otherwise, it kind of looked... I don't know. The, the, the vault head didn't look kind of... It, it just didn't mesh well with the gray background. But yeah. I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to invest in like a green screen or something, but right now I just have one like picture of my head that I keep using to like put on thumbnail images. Well... Mm -hmm. I'm making thumbnails for something, wink, wink. But, um, yeah, I, I should take some more pictures, you know. A green, a green screen is, is also something I'm considering investing in. Because investing in, because they're not that expensive. I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not expensive, you know. So, it's like, do I really want to spend, like, the, I don't know, like, 80 bucks for a good one? Like, with the stand and everything? Yes. Know. Because you need to do that uh, proper YouTubing where you put your face, your face takes up half the thumbnail and you're like making some sort of silly face, you know? Uh, oh, yeah, the, the O face. That's like, how you Whoa. maximize <laughs> revenue. Now you got to change it up every, you, you could do the O face every other one, but throw a smile, throw like a ah, or like a ooh. Or, or a big smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> <laughs> or like you're crying. And then you actually you actually pull like something crazy like it was just a a trick you know yeah that'd be kind of funny I mean maybe I'll actually uh, I could do that or maybe I'll draw like I'll, I'll take my avatar also and I'll good just, idea and, and yep. I'll just I'll just draw him with like a, like a sad face or <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll draw him with like a gun to his head when it's like a really bad <laughs> <laughs> not feeling good today guys <laughs> it's, it's, oh no. Yeah, that, that 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 got dark quickly. I'm sorry. Let's uh, change the subject. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, from death we go to uh, creation, and uh, all you uh, level with me heads out there, uh, stay tuned. As uh, later this week, we will be launching a level with me channel, 
That's what it's mm-hmm. called. Just level with me. And this is going to be one, the home of the podcast from now on. Uh, right now, me and Mike upload the podcast, but I believe it's just going to go on there from now on. Yeah. I think it'll just make more sense that way. I, I think it, it just makes more sense for the, to find the podcast videos. You go on the podcast, right. YouTube, yeah. you know. And not only will it be where the podcast is, but me and Mike are planning to do some uh, Let's Play style videos on that channel. So oh, yeah. we're going to have both each of us playing games together or maybe even verses in the future. And um, also, I guess, like solo Let's Plays. I, I know I have one in the works. I don't know if you do. No, I I think I told you like last week. You know, I, so, I still want to. Yeah. I'm still working on it. Just haven't gone to it yet. It's been, it's, okay. been a, it's been a busy week. Yeah, but I, but I have a lot of ideas with this channel. I'm sure there'll be other things on here. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't even oppose to doing skits. I like skits, but I this, love doing skits. This is just like our new like um, community channel, I guess, if you will. I mean, it's just you and me. It's not like we have a our, our partner. Or, you know, whatever level with me is so. Mm-hmm. Go check that out. Uh, we'll promote it later. I mean, it's technically, honestly, it's up. If you guys want to go subscribe to it now, it's just called Level With Me, but there's no videos on there. I'm assuming this podcast will probably be the first video. I'm working on uh, a Let's Play, which I should have the first part up sometime this week. And probably once we get the content rolling, it should be like, I would like to do one video a day, if not multiple. But um, yeah, just like Let's Play series and podcast every Monday should be good. I'm really, uh, really looking forward to it. I'm. I think it'd be a lot of fun because it's funny. Like, I think it's better even just for my channel because, like, my channel again. Like, I'm the collector's vault. So, on the collector's vault, you would think it's all collectible stuff. You know, talk about cards, video. Like, I mean, you can't talk about video games, but like, I did upload some of my own let's plays on there, and I real. I think they're a little out of place, so it might. Because then I think I do have moments where people unsubscribe because they think, oh, I thought this was a, a Metroid channel playing it, and apparently it's not because there's Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon on it, and vice versa. So that's kind of why I feel like if we have the Level With Me channel, then people know this is where you go to talk. I mean, funny skits are great and all, but like if, if you want to watch Let's Plays or talk about games, then they know this is the channel to go to, you know? That's correct, yes. Um, I, I will talk about one of the games that I am putting on this channel uh, later in the podcast because I've been playing it a little bit. Uh, but as a tease for two of the other games that, well, one, I don't even think I told you, Mike, one of the games I'm going to be playing, but the other one is going to be a, a we're going to both play through. Well, I'm going to be playing it, but Mike's going to be uh, backseating me, if you will, not really telling me how to play the game, but, you know, playing it with me. Um, uh, ha- Hang on. I didn't plan these teases out. Um, so the so the one that'll be <laughs> me, uh, like a solo one. Uh, there was uh, this this really uh, this really uh, brass guy from the the nineties who uh, he really didn't like Nintendo, and uh, he told the plumber to hang it up. And uh, I, I don't know what else to say, but go get some peaches. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to play that. I never played those. Anywho. Uh, the one that's gonna be uh with you, you Mike and me. Sorry, I'm a little out of it right now. Is... <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was gonna say like about uh, five seconds ago, you lost me. I was like, wait, wait, what's going on here? Peaches well, we're, and... uh, we're out of that one. <laughs> All right. I, mean, I, figure, I think I know. I think I know what you're talking about. It'll but make anyway. sense in the future. And then mm-hmm. for the one that me and you are gonna play, I mean, what better tease than to go back to our previous podcast title, uh, Ghost Smashers. Except singular, there's one ghost smasher. Um, he he is going on a vacation with his brother and uh, his brother's girlfriend, maybe maybe loose relationship girlfriend. I don't know there, and uh, they're staying at this lovely hotel. And uh, I think we're gonna have a good time. I am looking forward to it already. Yes, yes, and of course, uh, well, we talked about this last week, but uh, we we we're gonna play more clubhouse games at some point. Oh, absolutely. I'm yeah. really sad. I haven't touched that game once. I played that game like twice last week. I- I'm really disappointed that I didn't get to play any more of it. Mm. I just I've been playing. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I was going to say, I-, I play like a-, a couple games of checkers and chess here and there. And then uh, 
but it's only I, I've only had like a few minutes here now to play it, so I've been just busy working on like videos and other and the house packing up and stuff. But yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say it seems like, I mean, personally for me, I don't really want to play it too much single player. It, it's more mm-hmm. of like a multiplayer thing, whether that be with you or like I, I still want to show my girlfriend like all the games. You know, yeah. we just did bowling that one time last week where I like destroyed her, but I'd like to actually play a round with her when she gets used to it. And, and as well, like I said, I, I probably only played like 10 games in that thing and there's 51. Yeah. And, yeah there's a lot. <laughs> Maybe some games that like aren't really well known and probably not the most popular, but yeah, there are, there's definitely enough to keep you busy. I mean, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying, how like, some of the games you can play by yourself, but they're they are meant to be played with someone else. To be, they're meant to be played with other people on whether on especially online. But uh, yeah, because like even like even like when I'm playing checkers and chess, like, I, I enjoy it. It's just that like you know I can kind of just zone out and just it's like my it's just I can just sit back and relax and play it w- without having to really think. Well, I mean you are thinking playing those games. It's checkers and chess, but like you know it's no, not like no, you're I know what walking. You mean. But, it, but if, if I was like, playing with you, for example, I would like maybe think a little bit harder, and I'm maybe talking with you, having a conversation as we're playing. Right. So, yeah. Also, uh, real quick for the channel to wrap this up, I think you and me have like this pretty good contrast because honestly, I play a lot of modern games and I feel like with how your content was on your channel, it was a lot of like retro stuff. I don't know if that's what you're going to continue to do, but I think that's like pretty cool, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I think we kind of like established that. Like you do, like you're definitely more into the modern gaming uh, era, but like yeah, you're more up to date, I guess, with more mod- with gaming news. That's why, like, hence why you started the channel in the first place, you know. But, right. Uh, and I do like modern games. I just, uh, I guess I'm just, I'm like an old school player at heart. So like, even though I do love, like for example, I'm I was looking forward to a lot of the big new Nintendo games for the Switch that they're coming out and. Uh, but I don't own like every console, so obviously I love. Uh, there are some like IPs and series from Xbox that I love, but I can't play them. And the same with the same with the PlayStation. So I only have like a few games here and there coming out to play on the Switch. So I always just keep falling back on my old school games. And I, I, I me personally, I just don't have a problem with that. I, I love playing old school games, and so that's why I think it, it, it is kind of a bit of like a good dichotomy where like maybe. I'm not saying you can't do old school games and I can't do more modern games, right. but maybe like. You might prefer the modern games, and I and personally, I do also prefer playing older games. I think they're fun, to, especially for let's play. Like, I love like let's playing older games because then I'm more familiar with it as well, so I can kind of like play through it at a good pace. And believe you me, I have plenty of ideas for games I'd like to let's play because you know there's a there's a ton of good stuff out there. Like I, I oh, yeah. love a lot of games on the SNES. Uh, there are the hey guess what guys there's a lot of good games on that there snes whether oh, it be yeah. nintendo or capcom or konami you know <laughs> the list goes on and on i oh i'm pretty sure i've said this before i really have never touched the metroid series i i played a little bit of prime three played a little bit of wait. other m that's my experience that's it can't wait for you to i can't wait to do let's plays with you that, I, that way you can i think i'd love metroid. super metroid I love Metroidvanias. I'm sure that's like my favorite game that I've never played before. And uh believe or honestly like that seems to happen a lot with SNES games because uh up until Breath of the Wild Link to the Past easily became my favorite Legend of Zelda game and it's still fantastic. I would play that game any day. I love that game so much. Oh yeah. I always wanted to beat all of Super Mario World too. That's like my favorite Mario game, but yet I've never been able to get through the whole thing. I don't know. Really? Why. Yeah. Oh, ha- what a coincidence! That was on my list of things to talk about today. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Um. Oh. Well, I, I mean, do you want to just start talking about that? Because I got nothing else to say about you know the Let's Play channel. Oh. <laughs> Other than go su- subscribe to that, guys. Tell your friends. You know, there'll be content on there. I mean, it's a little barren now. You know, let's give oh, it a, well, like a month or so to fluff up. Yeah. Actually, I do have to talk to you about making sure I know I. So that way I know how to log on to that. And, uh, oh, yeah. Stuff. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, did you want to talk... If, was there anything else... Before we start talking about more game stuff, was there anything else like going on during the week that you wanted to talk about? or? 
Uh, well, I mean, real quick, I can talk about like what I did last week. Uh, I was surprisingly busy. Like, once we get to games, like I honestly didn't even really play that much or like watch that much stuff. And I don't even know how I got so busy. Like, I, I I'm trying to remember what I did. Like, I don't even think I really did anything. I I, I think it was just like. Oh, you know what? I actually, I did do a couple things thinking about it here. Thursday, oh no, wait. Wednesday, I actually went to my mom's and I went swimming with my girlfriend. That was really nice. I haven't been in her pool all year yet. It's uh, above ground, but it's still pretty nice. Um, And then on Thursday, what did I do there? Oh, wait, no, no. Thursday, we were, it was just like the the PlayStation 5 reveal and... Oh, yeah. uh, I was supposed to record with you. I ended up recording with my friend, but I was, I, I did live stream that, and it it took the wind out of me. Uh, we'll talk about that later, obviously, but that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um. That that'll wake me up and get me in focus because there there was good announcements there. Anyways, uh, Friday I actually went to a uh, protest for the um, for like George Floyd and Black Lives Matter type of thing, and uh, that was really cool. I was really glad I did that. I was okay. actually. This isn't really related to the protest, but I was, like, kind of down that day, like, really sad. And I almost was just going to, like, not go, like, tell my girlfriend. Like, I didn't, I didn't have a good day at work. I kind of wanted to just, like, mope in my, my apartment. But I, I ended up going because I'm like, I, I should just get out. Like, it's not good to just sit inside. Plus, I think my girlfriend would have been mad at me if I canceled, like, last minute. So uh, I went, and I, I had a good time. I was, you know, I, I'm glad I did it. It was cool hanging out with everyone and hearing like uh people's stories about events that occurred with mm-hmm. them and like neighbors or police or something like that it was you know it was all uh peaceful nothing happened to us and we didn't hurt anyone uh the township we did it in the police were also like with us so they were just kind of like patrolling us and keeping an eye on us but it's cool i really liked it uh, okay cool really really quick thing from that uh there was this like uh, pastor who made this speech uh, kind of like saying how this is bigger or it is like a religious thing but like we're all like connected by this like you know uh, but he was just ripped and I thought that was hilarious like he was like <laughs> talking a lot with his hands and his muscles were just spewing out of him and I'm just like damn I wonder what he did before he became a pat. well I, I mean I guess he could work out you know just because he's fallen God doesn't mean he can't follow that gain those gains you know what I'm saying I am very sure that Jesus worked out in his spare time. Exactly. He's I a mean, carpenter. That Yeah, I mean, he, I think he had to be in shape. And, you and, got and a swing an axe? That's a good exercise. Yeah, yeah, and a fisherman, too. You have to be in shape to do that kind of job, you know? You can't be out, you can't be out of shape. Um. So, yeah, that was cool. Last but not least, on Saturday, I actually ventured down to the beach with my family. As this pandemic is well technically the quarantine is just ending the pandemic technically i guess doesn't really end but we're 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 starting to go into green here and um i'm not gonna lie i was definitely nervous uh this being one of the first big events that i've been to well not even really event but just i i knew there'd be a lot of people at the beach because it's very nice right now it's pretty much like summer here like not too hot and uh there definitely were a lot of people there but Overall, like I, I had a great time, and I'm glad I did it. You know, it's it's always good to be in a beach. Um, oh yeah, plenty, plenty of booze just within arm's reach. Literally, all the restaurants had like sidewalk, like you could order food or booze, tempting me with the various mixed drinks. <laughs> I forget, I forget what these one things I had were called. I went to Cape May, New Jersey. If anyone wants to know, um, but they were like these little like bottles of cocktails like prepared already and i think they were all like about like 15 to 20 percent and you're supposed to cut them over water but i just drank it out of the bottle because i didn't trust the water or the cup I, you know i don't know where their hands have been like if someone touched <laughs> it or something um but yeah they were really good i think they were called like clubhouse like signatures or clubhouse mixtures but yeah it was like you know it was like 80 degrees out and i saw this little one and it was called margarita i'm like that sounds good right now and uh that thing messed me up. It was probably only like eight ounces, but I, I don't drink a lot. So I, I had a good time in Cape May with my family. I mean, you know, being drunk aside, uh, you know, it was, it was a really nice day. It was nice spending time with my, my family and even my girlfriend. 
Uh, it, it was nice going on the beach. I didn't go in the water. I did get sunburnt because I am very pasty. Uh, Same. I, I I was I was sad though that you know most of the restaurants there were still closed. I think it's this upcoming weekend that more that they're like uh, you know uh, descaling. Yeah. yeah, like they're going they're gonna have more of the sidewalk eating open that just like kind of started coming in our area or being open in our area. So I guess we kind of missed the boat on that. Like really, I, I'm gonna tell you what I ate on Saturday. I literally, I, I got like this ice cream sandwich there. I, I I was gonna just glaze over it, but I can't because they're like a specialty. It's not just like that that Oreo color like rectangle. It's not that. There's this place in Cape May, and I think it's a chain. It's called the Peace Pie, and they basically make gourmet ice cream sandwiches. And the cookies are, from what I saw, just like chocolate and vanilla, and they're kind of somewhere in between an ice cream sandwich cookie or whatever you call that the the bread essentially and then an oreo so it's kind of crunchy but it's also a little soft and it, it's a little bit sweeter than an oreo and you can get that in vanilla or chocolate and then the filling is essentially what makes it gourmet is that they have like 30 different flavors the one i got was called elvis which had chocolate cookies chocolate ice cream peanut butter and some sort of banana spread on there and it was really good anywho that's not what I wanted to talk about. The other stuff I ate, Wawa food. Shoutouts to Wawa. East Coast, Beast Coast. Can't beat it. I had a breakfast burrito. I had a dinner burrito. Both fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So what did you eat today? Burritos. From Wawa. Oh, that's cool. what else? A, a gas oh, cool. what station else? burrito. Oh, cool. What else? Burritos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I had a good time. It was really good. Um, yeah, other than that, I did nothing. What about you? Uh, let's see. Well, kind of, like I mentioned, this has, it's been very busy with me with the whole house situation. You know, all all positive stuff. You know, just um, taking care of, uh, mainly packing up for the move. We're scheduled to move in like a week and a half, which is pretty exciting. Um, I wish I went to the beach. Believe me, I, I want to go to the beach so bad. I don't think I've been to the beach since... Probably like two years ago or more. It's Damn. it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Um. What else? Let me think. Um. I have been working on again, mainly just working on, just work on some videos in my in my uh, spare time. So when I come home from work, I do the usual stuff, pack up some stuff, and then I just kind of like spend like an hour or so working on some videos and I'm still trying to wrap up my one Metroid review video. So that's coming along pretty well. Hopefully I'll get that done. You know, hopefully within a week and I will see how that, how that comes out. Um, let me see what else. Um, oh, I've been doing some more uh, collection buying. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold myself back because like, obviously right now I'm not trying to spend too much money with the house situation. And like, uh, Technically, like the mortgage company is like monitoring my finances, so I can't like just like withdraw a whole bunch of money out of my out of my bank. You know, they'll wonder like, well, what's that going towards? Gotcha. Not the like unless I prove them it's going to the house. And even 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 a man that doesn't really want, want me spending a lot of money, and I, I get that. But I've kind of just been going. I've been kind of like going through some of my. Uh, I actually had some collections I bought a while ago, and I picked all the good stuff out, and I threw the rest in bulk. But it's been so so long since I've looked at it. I went back and picked through it, and I found like just a lot of good stuff. I mean, I was going nice. through, and I found like, yeah, it's, it's one, like one of the best feelings in the world. One of the best feelings in the world is when you go through your own your own bulk, and you're like, oh wow, look, I, look at I, this. Yep, I've been there. Let's see. Um, I do have a video coming up. I actually did acquire a really really cool Pokemon collection. And I didn't include it in my last flea market video, but I do want to make uh, my own little video for this particular Pokemon collection. So that'd be kind of fun to, to do. How many Tyranitars? No, this is well. Here's a bit of a spoiler alert. Everything <laughs> in here is older than the Team Rocket set, so that means oh dope, OG OG stuff. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, believe me, I wish the Tyranitars in there. He's my favorite. Same. Really? I never knew that. Yeah, I love Tyranitar. Oh, Corey, you're just the best. You know that. Hey, you're the best too. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah. I, I unfortunately, I, I wish I had more to talk about my 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 week, but uh, no, it's just it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be like that for a while with the whole moving process. You know. 
when when uh me and my family were on the way to uh the beach we passed a few of the spots that we usually go to for like flea markets you know like some are only mm-hmm. open on like a saturday or a sunday or something like that oh yeah and it just made me want to go so badly i love just looking f- through flea markets it, like i as old as this might sound i will enjoy even if i don't find any like toys or video games like stuff that i like like Sometimes you see things that are just really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, yeah, it's not. It's it's kind of like window shopping. It's just you're you're just like amazed by the things that you, that you can gaze upon. You know. I don't know why, but I love seeing like really old technology. I always think that stuff's really neat. Sometimes I don't even know what it is, and I'm like, is that like? Did they use that to play music? <laughs> I mean, I know what a cassette and record. I. I, I'm I'm only 26, but I I know that stuff. Come on, come on, guys, come on. CD player, it's my shit. That's what I grew up with. That's gonna. Oh. I, I I know like a lot of people always collect records, and I get that. Trust me, they're way cooler than CDs. But I'm the CD guy. I probably have like 70 CDs. <laughs> I always I I want to get like one of those things that you can hang on a wall or a door, and you can put like all your little CDs in. I think it'd look cool. Cause I, I love those. I love like C D and album art. It's always neat. Yeah. I, I had some similar s- similar to that for my car. And uh, you know, it obviously wouldn't hold as much as the kind you put on the like, Yep, the brand. binders. Forget the binders of cardboard, the binders of compact discs. No, yes. no, no. The binders for cardboard are the best binders, but <laughs> but yes, I do like the uh, ones for the compact discs you know it's cool too it's funny you mention that because i literally saw a meme on twitter a few days ago that of someone comparing how the ps5 looks to one of those uh monster white and black binders (laughs) there's a lot of good memes about i'm I'm sure i'm sure we'll talk about this later as well but i do want to mention that there are so many funny memes about the ps5's appearance oh my lord one of them did you see the one where it looked like Kaiba from you from Yu Gi Oh? Uh, of course, it, ha- it yes. looks it, it looked like his white jacket. That was pretty funny. <laughs> this is this is fantastic level with me crossover right here. Both the Yu Gi Oh and video games together oh, yeah. in harmony. Yes, just like peanut butter and chocolate, or sausage and pizza. <laughs> Don't no, you mean sorry, meatballs? It, 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 meat, meatball and pizza. Oh, I'm sorry. the yeah. callbacks! It's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn uh, it. I'll, I'll see myself out. I just ruined the whole joke because I couldn't get it right. <laughs> all right. Let's start the show. All right. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Level With Me Podcast, episode 53. I, I just accidentally opened Audacity. I hope I didn't mess anything up. <laughs> okay. Episode 53. That, that, that start, start over. Podcast ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I... I am one of your hosts, GameBro Corey, joined alongside my co-host, Mike, aka the Collector's Vault. How you doing, Mike? Hey, Corey, and uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Level With Me podcast. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to be back. Um, how long has it been? A week, as per usual, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, I, I, the, the system tells me it's always Monday, so. Let me check my calendar. Oh, it says podcast day. I, I put the Every audio day. cord right into my vein, and something in my mind just was surging. Monday! So I just listened to it. Ooh, that sounds like a really d- disturbing anime or something. Like an, an anime plot. <laughs> uh Oh, I was I had a point, and I almost just lost it. But I was going to say, y- you know how last week I was like, I don't really know what to say for like when we start the podcast now? Because I was... This- I was gonna comment and say, did Cor- I was gonna say, Corey, did you come up with a good intro yet, or are you okay? Just make it to go along again. Let, let me explain. I did. I just forgot to write it down. I just <laughs> literally remembered about it as I was reading it. I'm like, oh damn it, oh, I forgot crap, to do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> but I did think of one that I, I don't want to say on air what it is. You know, I'll I'll, well, leave, I'll leave a little tease. Yeah, well, <laughs> next, but next week, guys, next week, it'll be perfect. Yeah, next Just week, I'll wait. also have the jingle that I promised a year ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, 
I mean, yeah, we talked about uh, Wawa burritos. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, PS5 Yu-Gi-Oh memes. I mean, I think we can pretty much end the podcast right now. We we met our quota, you know. That's true, but we didn't talk about what we played and what we watched. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. All right. Come on, Corey. You've been doing this podcast how long? I've guys, been here for like guys, just stick around days. one hour, maybe more, and then you can hear what we've been playing and watching, and you know whatever. Um, uh, but without further ado, uh, do you got anything you want to throw in here, Mike, before we just dive in to the week, the news? Uh, see, Corey, I wish I had something to talk about, but I say let's just go on to the, the, the news of the week, because there's been a lot that happened over this last week. There so really gonna... has been. I'm yeah, getting so I'm close to pretty... my mic. I'm getting hype again, because guys, they announced the PS5. It looks PS, yeah, so it looks weird. Like a burrito. It looks like the a burrito. modem is coming, baby. The modem, the PS modem. It's either you, you can either purchase, you can either purchase a, a mini fridge, or you can purchase mom, a modem for the computer. Mom, hang up! I'm playing Call of Duty. You gotta get <laughs> these fat dubs, mom. All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, they announced the PS5. Uh, why don't we uh, go right into all the the cool games they announced? Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this. Uh, I okay. So right off the bat, I think Sony did a great job. I feel like Sony, or maybe this is Microsoft's fault, but they always have this trend where they just always dunk on Microsoft because Microsoft thinks they have the balls to go first. And then they do, and then Sony's like, okay, let's just do the opposite of what everyone hated about the Microsoft one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause in a way, it's it's kind of like they're pulling the uh, the Price is Right technique. Yeah. Let them let them go first, and then I'll just it, one of them by buy, buy buy a penny, and it's one, good. It's better than everything they do. One hundred percent. And I do want to say I am I I do usually buy the PlayStation Sony system now because I prefer the Japanese developers. You know, they tend to generally generally. Uh, program and develop on the uh, Japanese systems rather than the uh, Xbox. But I I don't want to just say I'm picking this because I'm a fan. I'm just saying they, they literally did everything that Microsoft didn't do. I mean, Microsoft showed a, a couple cool games, but they were all just like, you're watching a trailer. Like, how do you even know? Like, half of those trailers, I'm like, what, what do you do in this game? Yeah. What was that like- Sony's event? Tons yeah, of gameplay. But, Literally first yeah. the trailer, and then they're like, here's like two minutes of gameplay. Like that yeah, new Ratchet and Clank. Like, they had a lot. <laughs> yeah. And and it's like, not only are they providing gameplay as opposed, as opposed to just cinematic trailers where they say, no, guys, trust us. This is this is gameplay footage. Like, okay, I guess we'll believe you, but like, show us gameplay. That's Teasers and cinematics are awesome, but gameplay is so critical. And not only that, but it wasn't just like, oh, like, like newer stuff, and here's what the graphics are, the graphics are going to look like. They're they're bringing like games that people are asking for, like great old IPs like Ratchet and Clank. Like, that, like that's crazy, you know. They have a new Ratchet and Clank game, and then there's a. I'm, I'm kind of reading ahead. There's Spider Man, the Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. I'm guessing this is that, that's that's what this is. Like it's this is what this is what people want, you know. Exactly. But um, and speaking on them, with, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna make a really so bad dumb one. joke. <laughs> yeah, did you ever hear the thing? Oh, Sega does what Nintendo don't. Yep. I was gonna say, yeah, PS does what Xbox, d- and I stopped. There no, it is. Okay. Terrible. Uh, yeah, and yes, to further dunk or maybe du- d- d- double dunk. I meant to stutter there. Double dunkaroo dunk. The PlayStation Five has two models: one with a disc drive. And one all digital. Could you yeah. believe it? It's like Microsoft already was saying that they're going to do that. And they did. There's an Xbox One you can get without a disk drive. And they are talking about that there will be an Xbox Series X with a without a disk drive. And and Sony's like out of nowhere. Like, yeah, we're doing it too. And mm-hmm. they announced it first. All, yeah. <laughs> also, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, like, I think that was smart that they just came out. It, it wasn't like, oh, we're working on it's not like, hey, we're working on it. Like, yeah. nope, here it is. It's coming out the same day as the the disc version. You know, it's they did everything. They they did they, they did it all correctly. They did they did, they did it the right way. And and now, I mean, I'm just gonna get right into it. 
uh, literally the first point. I have a big article in front of me from IGN that says everything announced at the PS5 reveal event. Uh, so we're going to just talk about, yes, the design of the console. So furthering my point about this digital model, it looks like that's how the console should look. The disk drive literally looks like a tumor on the right side of the console. Mm-hmm. Bulging out. Like, uh, just it, it's almost like a pimple. Like, you just want to pop it back in or get that out of there. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of funny. It looks like the system has like a cyst or a tumor on it. It's like yeah. That. You think you think they would have made it like more symmetrical, but I mean, I don't know. I guess I guess it it almost looks like as if they made the digital only version first. Yes. And then and then it's like, oh yeah, crap. We're supposed to make one with the disk drive, and I just throw it on the side. <laughs> so the, yes. It's the one time where it's like, uh, all right, guys, whatever. Um, I also want to point out here that, um. Oh my god, I just lost my point. Shit. Oh. Uh I got it again. Sorry. Shout outs to Nintendo for again being ahead of the game with the Wii for two things here. First of all, it's white, like the Wii, remember? The Wii was white, the first one. And two, it's standing upright. You know, the Wii was one of the first consoles that had the stand that stood like tall, like almost like a building. So is this mm-hmm. monstrosity. Now, you can put it flat like everyone will probably do, but I'm just saying, you, you know. God, I, I know you don't have a PS4, but I'm wondering how loud some of those, those fans are going to be, like those two vents, because the PS4 gets pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny, because like a buddy of mine at work is, a, is very tech-savvy with computers and video games, and he actually mentioned how, you know, back in the 90s, when gaming was really getting popular, you like you know basically those v- video game consoles were like state of the art, like in, in technology. And then as they got to like the generation seven, generation eight, basically computers were just more powerful in every way. And like the, even like the Xbox One and the PS4, they seemed to be like just not as powerful as like computers for computer gaming. And then. I think people were thinking, like, yeah, like, these really aren't, like, that. I mean, they're, they're impressive as far as games go, but not overall as technology goes. And then with, like, like not just the PlayStation 5, but even the Xbox Series X, it looks like they're they're finally like, they're finally buckling down and saying, let's make these things, like, powerful, you know? Let's get them, let's put the solid-state drives in there, let's put in the, the, the powerful processors. So, hopefully, along with that, they actually do come up with proper the proper hardware and the proper cooling system so that way they're not like about to explode because these are again much more powerful machines that will like compete with like modern day computers as far as power goes so i have a feeling that they probably will get really loud but I, you, you would think like along alongside that they would have proper cooling systems even if the fans i'm I, hopefully the fans don't sound like they're about to like break off their axle the axles or whatever I'm honestly a little uh, conflicted here. I kind of am tempted to buy the all-digital version this time around, but uh, the collector in me wants to still get the the disk drive version. I understand why the digital version is out. Like, I think that that's just the future. It, I get it, you know? Um, I'm definitely not a fan of the whole... Uh, what's the Google thing? Stadia, where like, it's streamed. I would I mean, at least you know other consoles that you just you download the games yeah. digitally and then you keep it on like a flash drive. Yeah, Stadia is more like or, Netflix or something. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so I I would I would always rather own the, your game. Yeah, but I, I also feel I like, but I also prefer physical media. I like owning like a physical copy of my game. I don't know. Me I, too. Maybe maybe that's yeah. Maybe that is the collector in me. Maybe, maybe that's just the old school, the old school gamer in me. But I just I just like having. Like not just the the art of the box. That's also what I like. I like having like my games, the the game I box. I like that. Cool. Yeah, yeah, because they're cool looking, and it, it it looks nice. It looks cool on your shelf as part of your collection, you know. But uh, I don't know. There, there to me, there's just something about holding that game in your hand. It's just something. That, I think that's just a, a '90s kid problem, you know. I feel that kids these days, born in the 2000s, these uh, these uh, mil- not, the, not the millennials. Gen so I'm a millennial. Z? Gen- is that what they're called? Yeah, because technically we're millennials. I think if you're a '90s kid, you're technically a millennial. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. Whatever the two thousand the two thousand babies are, they're they're all used to you know quick saves and auto saves and digital only games. 
You gotta get uh, your memory card. <laughs> oh man, you know what was weird? They brought the memory card concept in, and then and then it just went away. It wasn't like it became the future. It's like, yeah, hey, let's try this. That was bullshit. Yeah, because they had to sell you a memory card. Now yeah. consoles just come with that in the, yeah. internally. I know because I was like, oh look, the, like what was it? The, no, even the it wasn't even just uh, it was the PlayStation One that started it off. Where like, yeah, yeah you have to the buy game, a memory card the, or the N sixty four, the in- expansion pack or whatever. Well, the expansion pack was only for certain games, but like, you could save like the the, the N sixty four did have a, right. a hard drive. Yeah, it was just PlayStation and brought it back, brought it out, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of silly. It is. And then PS two came out, and they're still doing that, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? And then the GameCube did it too. I'm like, no, why? What are you guys doing? Why? Why? Go to <laughs> and then the Xbox is like, and, and I, I'll give I'll give Microsoft credit. The Xbox came out. Bro, we have a fifty megabyte hard drive. What up? And then it's like, oh, the Duke. Yeah. And that didn't need one. And then obviously when Generation 7 came around, wait, 7? Yeah, with the Wii and the PS3 and the Xbox 360, they got their sets straight and said, yeah, memory cards are stupid. I mean, you can still have one to, to, to share your content, share, share your games with people, but like, yeah, saving games onto the console stuff is just a better thing. Uh, and I, I'm totally with you there. Like, yeah, I do love having physical copies of games because I do like how the, the box looks, you know? Mm-hmm. But one, I am running out of shelf space. I don't know if I just need to get a house or more shelves. You know, I, I'm sure that's an option. But uh, I, I was considering getting digital to save some room. Also, you know, it, it's just a little more convenient. Like you can literally have that file ready to be installed and like midnight or a little bit before like the game's officially going to come out. It's just like unlocked, like go go nuts, and they can start playing from the comfort of your home and your underwear, you know. Yeah, it's true. Again, I, I, I think that that's just one of those quality of life things that the future brings. You know, yeah. you can just download it and not have to leave your house. True. But, yeah. I don't know. Again, there, there's goods I mean, and bads, you know. Yeah, I still. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to repeat myself, but yeah, I'm just more of an old school guy. I like having physical games. It's just me. Also, speaking of all this, uh, Sony did not announce a release date or prices for either of their models yet. So, yeah. Um, we're just going to run through pretty much all the big announcements at the show. They're kind of ordered here. Um, so, so one of the things I will knock against the show is that it kind of just confirmed a lot of rumors that were going around. Like, oh... I, I hear they're making a Horizon sequel. Oh, the voice actress of Aloy has talked about the sequel in an interview or something like that. So it's like some of these things we thought were real or think are real. And it's like, oh, yeah, they finally just announced it. So it, it kind of took some of the, the surprise out of it. But at the same time, it was just cool seeing the final product. Also, for those of you who don't know this, all the trailers during this uh, event are on YouTube on, like, PlayStation's official website and are all in 4K because I, th- I feel like that's something we lose when we watch these streams is the next generation of gaming is all 4K, and I don't have a 4K gaming monitor, you know, and I that's why I watch the stream. I don't even know if they streamed it in 4K. I don't think they did. But, like, we can't appreciate, like, how that looks. I, I don't even think phones have 4K yet, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need to... You need to see it in action. It is quite breathtaking watching these trailers. I, I think it'll be more impressive in motion, but I, I'm just saying, you know, if you guys want to go see what that looks like, it it is worth it to watch mm. them in 4K. Um, but anyways, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, the sequel has been announced. A sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn was revealed for PS5. A cinematic trailer made the reveal, complete with Aloy riding a robot horse-type creature, swimming through what appeared to be the remnants of a flooded San Francisco and climbing icy peaks. There wasn't a release date. Um, yeah, I think this looked really cool. There was definitely, uh, it was definitely a San Francisco-inspired area. There's literally the Golden Gate Bridge with all these like vines and trees all grown over it. It's the the world of Horizon is really cool. I'm digging it. And the whole, like, swimming, that's, like, a new aspect. That looks really neat. Hmm. Did, did you watch any of these trailers, Mike? Or do you just kind of no, want I, to, like, run down everything? Uh, I'll, I'll let you run through it. Because I'll be honest, like, as, as excited as I was to watch it, I, I was at work and I couldn't watch the live reveal. I get and even that. when I, even, even when I got home, everything was spoiled when I, the second yeah, I opened up. I like, hate YouTube. that. Yeah. 
So I was kind of like, oh, that's cool, I guess. And again, I'm not the biggest Sony fan, and I'm like, oh, I mean, it, it, it's it's very exciting that you know seeing these new consoles for the next generation and new games. Like, I am excited, but I don't know, I'm I'm more of like a Nintendo guy. So if it was like a Nintendo review, I'd be all over it. So the, the Xbox and Sony, it's like, well, if I missed it, like if I missed the live reveal, I'll I'll just I'll watch I'll watch uh, one of the other YouTubers and and they'll just summarize everything for me. You know, okay. And I, that's kind of what I do. All right, that's fine. No, well, then I'll just let's kind of ramble yeah. through all these stories real quick. There was a lot right. announced. I was literally just like scrolling through all the games, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, they they really did announce a lot of stuff here. Um, the I, I told my girlfriend this that this did kind of like satiate an E3 type vibe. Like they did announce a lot of big things here, so mm-hmm. like I, I was kind of happy about that. I was like, I still kind of got an E3, even though. Uh, E3 isn't happening this year. Uh, there's also a lot of announcements going on at IGN. They have, like, this summer of gaming thing. I have, like, uh, at least, like, ten different, like, trailers for these new games coming out that I want to talk about around the end of the podcast or the end of the new segment here. But, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff being announced constantly right now. Anyways, to continue the PS5 reveal event, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales announced... So there was a lot of controversy around this announcement. Originally, uh, one of the Sony execs told someone that this was like an expansion for the existing Spider-Man game on the PS4 and wasn't an entirely new game. And everyone was freaking out because, you know, during the reveal, they didn't really talk about that. But then it uh, got clarified that this is kind of going to be a side smaller game from the original Spider-Man game on the PS4. So... It's probably, it's going to look slightly better, I would assume, and it's probably going to be very similar to that with just slightly different, you know, powers and stuff to do, I guess, but just a little bit smaller on scale. I I never got around to playing that Spider-Man game, so I don't really know what that means. I guess just like half the, the play time, maybe half as much to do, uh, but that looked really cool. I'm really excited to actually play that one after I play the first one. Uh, it, it It was very beautiful visually. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, Resident Evil 8 Village revealed. Uh, so this is one of the games that was teased for a while. I'm glad Ooh. to see it's real. Uh, so this is following the new Resident Evil games. Like, it literally ra- right out of 7. Like yeah, 7. I was like, a 7? I, I, I'm not the biggest Resident Evil fan, but I heard 7, like, you know, it's it was like a first-person uh, style game, and it was re- I heard it was very well done. Yeah, that's correct. So, so this is going in the same... Path of yes. the same footsteps as that. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so it says the release date will be sometime in 2021. And uh, you play as Ethan again, who is the character from Resident Evil 7. And okay. uh, the, the theming of this is really neat. You're like in this European, like snowy castle slash like little village, I assume. And like, not only are there like there, there's like a ton of different enemy variety, which is really cool. So there's like all the townspeople who are kind of like crazy. You know, it's a Resident Evil game. You never really can trust anyone. They're always like itching their eyelids or something. And uh, <laughs> there, so there's the people that are pretty creepy. There's like a werewolf, which is like, oh, okay. So we're not even just doing viruses. Like we're doing mythological stuff. That's interesting. And it, it's not like a werewolf that's like, I don't know, like teen wolf or like very comically like almost a dog like it's almost like the most realistic version of that where it's very body horror and bloody and it's cool looking interesting there's also like i think spirit ghosts type enemies and there's also like witches and like the inside of the castle is this really like elegant like um I'm trying to think of the right words for it like uh almost like a 50s like a bar or something like that like the internals, okay. like it's very, like the outside, it's like a very dingy, like, you know, Resident Evil type, like everything's like got snow all over it. The castle walls and stuff are kind of like crumbly and the town's all like not in good shape. But then in the interior of this castle, it looked very like well lit. Well, kind of like candle lit, I guess, because it was still kind of dark. But the the main point I want to make about this is it the theme is just really interesting. It, it's It's very different from anything that Resident Evil has ever gone but gameplay it's gonna probably be pretty similar to resident evil 7 like a first person shooter but with survival aspects not actiony although they did say this one's going to be more actiony than 
Resident Evil 7. But it looked really good. I'm, I'm really excited for this. Awesome. Also, that's, uh, that's, also curious. Yeah, I, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I keep I keep interrupting you. I was just, just going to say, yeah, that's really cool. Also, so no, you're good. Also, we record this online. It's hard to do it. Also, uh, curious to know if they're going to have a VR version of this or not. Because Resident Evil 7 was in VR. Oof. Um, Continuing here, uh, Gran Turismo 7. Uh, looked really nice. I, I'm not a big... Uh, simulation racer so i know this is like a a showcase for the the playstation uh systems because it's like they're exclusive but it it didn't really do much for me it looked really nice the gameplay looked really good but or like pretty not like oh i would love to play that for hours and hours um but that's just me the new ratchet and clank game ratchet and clank rift apart uh this looked really neat i'm gonna be honest i've never played any of these games so, I, I don't know anything oh, about them. I have shame. no nostalgia for these characters. So, I was like, oh, they're making another one of those. That's really cool. But then I was just like, yeah, that did nothing for me. Not even that female version of Ratchet that I'm sure is blowing up on DeviantArt right now. That was like the big <laughs> tease is there's like alternate realities that Ratchet kind of jumps through and like Clank gets sent into another dimension. And there's like a kind of like a female version of ratchet but she's like white gray and she's like a different animal and she has like a robot arm and yeah you you can just imagine from there rule 34 it's all i can say all right (laughs) personally my favorite game announcement followed by my second game announcement as i see we're rolling here demon souls remake announced this looks incredible not the gameplay it's just it's like so for those of you who don't know, this is essentially the beginning game before Dark Souls. This is the game that FromSoft made that pretty much uh, stepping stone to Dark Souls, if you will. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this. It's literally a remake. It's made by Blue Point Games and uh, Japan Studio. That's like they make a bunch of like Sony first party games. But yeah, I'll be curious if they're going to make it like more like a Dark Souls 3 or Bloodborne, which the combat's a little more fluid and faster, or if it's going to straight up be like more clunky, like how the original Demon Souls was. Um, but but regardless of that, like you guys should just go look up the comparison screenshots of the PS3 version of this game to the PS5. It's incredible. Like the amount of detail they put into the environments and the, the armor and the character or the enemies. It's really cool. Uh, this was my favorite announcement, but I'm a big Souls fanboy, so go figure. Um, Nothing wrong with that. Next up, this looked really neat. Literally my second favorite game of the stream, Deathloop, PS5 gameplay reveal. So this was revealed last E3. This is It's published by Bethesda, but it's the studio Arcane Studios that they own. And uh, mm-hmm. this also apparently is a PS5 exclusive. It will also launch on PCs, though, and that, that was a new uh, reveal. Uh, but this looked really cool. It has like a, a really good theme where you play as like one of these two characters, and it was almost like a noir, like comic book type thing going on. Um, but it's a first person shooter where the gimmick is like it's kind of like you know, you live, die, repeat essentially. And it kind of looks like you're trying to get like the perfect run through a level, and uh, you pretty much can do that however you want to do it. So it's like, oh, you can see your end goal, and there's some enemies in your way. I'm sure you can probably just find ways to sneak around them. But uh, they also just laid out a bunch of different guns and explosives and pretty much ways to just mess up these guys. So it's like, you know, just just pick whatever you like using and then get to the end. And it looks like it really encourages like uh, like different like com like doing different actions. There's also like magic in the game. It, it gave me a little bit of a Bioshock vibe. Like you could like push and pull people or like move them to the side. I, I don't know if there's actually like other spells, but that looked really cool. Uh, I was digging Death Loop. Hey. Um, NBA 2K21. Uh, it's it's an NBA game. Moving on. Uh, GTA. F- okay, so this one's pretty interesting. So. During the PS5 reveal event, GTA 5 for PlayStation 5 was announced, and it was confirmed GTA Online will be given free or will be given free to all PS5 owners when it launches on 2021. Additionally, all PS4 owners will get 1 million in GTA 5 game cash 
starting uh, like a week ago, whenever the event happened on. And it almost seems like Rockstar and Sony are almost doing this sort of like deal right now. So I, I know back in the day they were going to publish a game together. It's called Agent. I wonder if they're either going to follow up on that or make their own like exclusive game for PlayStation 5 because this is a, this is a straight up deal. Also, it's interesting to see that GTA 5 literally launched three times and uh, it it's also interesting, I guess, to see GTA Online is free to all PS5 owners. Um, so I guess they won up the they won up Epic Games. I think weren't they the ones who released it for free? Like not, not that long ago. Yeah, yeah. And that's the online. There's a lot to do. Yeah. Personally, this does make me sad. Although I'm not a Rockstar guy, you could look at this and be like, "Yeah, it could be the death of the single player Rockstar game." You can see them really focusing on these online features. And I mean, it makes sense. It's what makes them a lot of money. Yeah. Um. Let's see. There was some PS5 DualSense uh, features shown. Nothing Nothing too crazy here. Oh, my God. I forgot about a bunch of these announcements. Sackboy, a big adventure announced. That's a horrible name. Um, <laughs> but, I was going to say, yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> I, I can sum up what this game is. This game literally looked like Super Mario 3D World, but in like the little big planet sack boy verse. So it's just like, you know, cardboard cut out, like very craft themed, like, you know, like crafting paper, little pipe cleaner things. So they took super Mario 3d world and Yoshi's crafted world and made their own game. Pretty much. Yeah. My goodness. That's copyright infringement. If I ever saw it, Oh, we, there are many Nintendo like games coming today that that's all i gotta say no uh yeah. but that actually looked okay considering it was a remake of Su- or kind of like a inspired by super mario 3d world and i actually really like super mario 3d world so that's i might game i might play this actually i like 3d platformers um hitman 3 coming january 2021 i'm not a fan of the hitman games i know that the last two were very good, so I'm sure someone was happy to see this announcement, and good for them. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo PS5 gameplay. Uh, so this was another game that was shown off right next to Deathloop last E3. It's again being published by Bethesda, but it's being made by a different studio. This looked pretty neat. I, I was a little disappointed, though. The gameplay... Uh, well, so what the game essentially is, is you're going through like a perfectly recreated Tokyo and there's a bunch of like ghosts and uh, like demons or yokai like traditional Japanese type stuff and uh, I guess your hero is trying to figure out like what's going on or why he can see these creatures and uh, you do fight them with first person magic almost kind of like a a Skyrim or an Elder Scrolls you know and uh I, I don't know. I, I didn't think it looked... The combat didn't look that interesting, but everything else looked cool. Like, the enemy designs were neat. The game itself, like, the whole world is really beautiful. Although it doesn't really have too much... Well, no. It has, it has like... There's, like, these very weird, like, art bits and stuff with lighting, because it's kind of like a horror game, but kind of not. It, it looked interesting. It didn't knock my socks off, though. Hmm. Um, Godfall gameplay. Uh, so this is by... Oh my god, what's the studio? It's the people... Gearbox, the people who do Borderlands. This is kind of like a action RPG Borderlands type game. Um, but the theming is more like medieval. And I don't think the comedy is going to be exactly like Borderlands. It also looks visually different. Like it's not got that cell shaded factor. But it's going to be like, hey, pick your class. Go out there and get various pieces of armor and weapons. You know, a, a looter slasher, essentially. Mm-hmm. Okay. It looks neat. And I think it's coming out this year. Yeah, it is. Holiday 2020. Um, Oh, boy. Pragmatic revealed from Capcom. This looks really neat. So this is a brand new game from Capcom. And uh, I I can't really tell you what kind of game this is. So it's essentially there's this really neat uh, astronaut looking dude in Times Square. And it's empty. And then he sees this little girl. And like... Something is, like, attacking the little girl. It's almost, like, from the sky. It's it's almost like it's a big simulation, like a bunch of screens and, like, cables are trying to get her. 
and like this astronaut is protecting her for some reason and he's like got all these weird like protection type devices on him like he has like this thing that almost like builds a bubble around them and they're in like a ball bubble being protected from the cables and then at the end it, it, you kind of see that he actually is in some sort of simulation he's on the moon and he and at the end it's like him and this little girl standing looking at earth on the moon and again i i don't know what this game is i don't know what you do in it i thought it looked really cool uh i like capcom so i'm interested to see whatever this is you know um astro's playroom okay you remember how i told you that Sackboy game looked like super mario 3d world yeah. Ast astro's playroom literally looks straight up like super mario odyssey like it's just like a 3d roaming platformer <laughs> but you play you as Astro, the little robot. Do you collect things? Is it like, like a 3D yes. collectathon? Yeah, oh, like Banjo-Kazooie, like that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, needless to say, I think it looked interesting because, you know, it's just a very high fidelity one of those. And uh, I don't know. I'll check it out. It seemed it seemed neat. Oh, also, it will come preloaded onto every PS5 for three. So that's pretty cool. And it'll okay. show off features of the DualSense oh. controller. So maybe it's not even like a game. Maybe it's more of like a tech demo, but it, it reminded me of Super Mario Odyssey. Okay, cool. Oddworld Soulstorm announced for PS5. I'm not an Oddworld fan. I know nothing about those games, but uh, I, I know they have a legacy, so someone probably liked them. Reter Returnal, Returnal excuse me, announced from developer Housemark. This actually looked really neat. It almost gave me a Metroid vibe. So this lady like crash lands on this planet and she steps out in her like spacesuit. And I think she like discovers like a, a gun or something in the woods. But essentially as she like goes through this planet, she's kind of like like time keeps repeating itself. Like she's like, oh, I've been here before. And it's almost like she's lived these lives and almost like respawned or the world has aged, but she hasn't aged. And uh trippy huh? yeah it, it seemed it, the world seemed interesting and the story also interesting and the gameplay was like a third person shooter but the the gun seemed really cool it seems like maybe you can like customize like what comes out of the weapons but i, I don't know i really dug this game it looked really interesting uh we got destruction all-stars not playstation all-stars 2 sad face um but this look this look kind of neat so this was the best way I can describe this game is it's like if you took Overwatch and uh, Rocket League and somehow put it in the middle. So it looked like it, it's like a racing game and like all the vehicles have like special abilities. But you can also get knocked out of your car, or jump out of your car because there was some scenes where the characters were just running around this arena. Uh, but it, it, it looks like just like a car combat game with I assume like a it's like a hero car combat game. I mean, it looked really nice. I think it was made by, it's it's made by uh, Lucid. I don't know what they did, honestly. Sorry. <laughs> um, Project Athena announced a new game from Square Enix and Luminous called Project Athena. When the trailer says it was designed exclusively for PlayStation Five, no release date was given at this time, but it was confirmed to be PS Five console exclusive. Um, there wasn't really a lot shown of that. It was just like some girl like walking through different environments I, I don't think there was anything too interesting there stray uh this looked pretty neat so this is like a world it, it starts off showing this like cyberpunk looking world with a bunch of robots and uh i think there was like a graffiti that says rip humans or rip all humans so it's i assume somewhere in the horrible future where we're all dead um but there's this cute little cat and i assume you play as the cute little cat in the robot world and just see how life is now Kenya, Bridge of the Spirits. God, there's a lot of announcements here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Kenya, Bridge of Spirits. This actually looked really neat. This is a brand new game from a brand new studio. Kind of gave me a little bit of Breath of the Wild vibes. Just kind of how it looks. Uh, actually, the gameplay a little bit, but it, it didn't look... It actually looked more like a linear game than open world. Um, you're like this girl, and something's going on in the forest there's like this evil force and she's kind of going around she has like this spear that also turns into like a bow and uh you know she's wearing like a light blue like tunic type thing and her bow has like light blue arrows and stuff like that and it's like i'm getting a lot of breath of the wild vibes uh 
this game I thought visually looked really cool. It, it almost reminded me of like a Pixar or Illumination Studios animation style. Like is really neat. Okay, I I'm just gonna save us all the trouble and scroll down here and see if there was anything else I need to talk to or talk about. There's not that many more. I, I'll talk about the last game, which was one of the weirdest things I saw the whole day, and it was one of like the last announcements. Is this game called Bug Snacks? Okay, Mike, Bug Snacks. You got that? Yum. And that's what the game is. Uh, there are bugs on this island, and they are made out of food. So in the picture, there's a strawberry where its leaves are its feet, and it's got big googly eyes on it. And uh, if these beings that look kind of like Muppet things eat them, they gain powers from the things they eat. So, well, I guess powers isn't the right word, because... Basically, this creature's arm turns into a bunch of strawberries, so I don't know how that's good or bad. Um, but there's this very weird, uh, like, Bug Snacks theme song, and this literally came out of nowhere. They they produced an entire song for this game. Uh, it, it just looks weird, man. And I, I think, like, the Bug Snacks eat each other and become, like, sentient. Literally like a drug trip, like, right at the end of the press conference. <laughs> like, where did this come from? I... It's made by the people who made Octodad, so I'm like, of course. Sure. Yeah, that, that, that game was weird on its Sure. Day, so. But yeah, I just didn't expect this. Living food bugs that you eat them and then you gain their food powers. The, like the one guy ate a hot dog and had weenie arms. That's what he said. He said <laughs> weenie arms in the trailer. See, you laughed. You, you liked it. Uh, I'm laughing at the absurdity of it. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm curious what the theme song is. Uh, look it up. It's like a girl, and she's like, with bug snacks, da 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 da. It, can't can't play it on the podcast. So we're gonna get copyright no. striked. But I was I don't know why I was thinking of that song like Love Shack, like bug snacks. I it, don't take crap. It, one of the... You're not far off. It kind of sounded like that. Um, yeah, I'll grow, <laughs> well, great. Now you're getting copyrighted. Dick. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was the majority of the PlayStation 5 reveal event. I just missed a few because I was getting tired about talking about it. It was good, though. Real good. <laughs> um, let, let's let's continue here with some uh, announcements. This one actually happened today. Also very exciting. Star Wars Squadrons officially revealed out oh, I, in October. I did see this. I was pretty excited to see another Star, uh, Star Wars game announced. Yep, yep. EA has formally announced Star Wars Squadrons, a first-person space dogfighting game set after the events of Return of the Jedi and coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. It will be released for $39.99 on October 2nd. Developed by Motive Studios, the game will include both a single-player story and multiplayer modes with cross-play support across all platforms and can be played in VR on PS4 and PC. And then... I will tell you a little bit about this game because there was a launch trailer with it. This game is also getting rumored for the past couple of weeks. Star Wars Squadrons story mode details. Squadrons will feature a single player story mode set after the Battle of Endor and the destruction of the Death Star 2. Alternating between two customizable pilots, the story will feature brand new characters and cameos from familiar faces. The two pilots you play as will show you both sides of the game's conflict. One flies for the New Republic's Vanguard Squadron and the other for the Shattered Galactic Empire's Titan Squadron. In a press release, Ian Frazier, creative director at Motive, says, Through the collaboration of the teams at Motive and Lucasfilm, we've been able to create a high-fidelity Starfighter experience with an authentic storyline that invites Star Wars fans to explore never-before-seen corners of the galaxy in their own ship. We're excited to show all this in action this week at EA Play Live. There will also be multiplayer. I'm not going to go through all the uh, details about it, but it will be five on five battles and with two different modes. I uh, yeah, I think this is great. I I will say this right off the bat: uh, not the kind of game that I would ever expect to be excited for. I like space battles in Star Wars, but personally, not my thing. But I I think what excites me the most about this is just the single player story. I I really want to check that out. Yeah, that's my that, to, ultimately to me that's what it comes down to because in many cases these things tend to be canon. So I'm and I also yeah. love how this is one of the few things that are really delving 
into the story after Return of the Jedi. I mean, we have the Mandalorian, which is which, which I love that is taking place after Episode Six, and so with this also taking place during that time frame, it's kind of I, I it's just that's exciting to me to see like you know what else is going to happen with the story, these new characters, and hope and hopefully the story and the gameplay is fun. I mean. I'm I'm, ass- cause I'm I'm assuming not all the gameplay is in this is in like is when you're fighting in space in the starships. I mean, I unless know. I'm wrong, I think it might be. Really, yeah, I think really? it's just gonna okay. all be space combat. Maybe Especially like, like I mean, like it'd be Fox cool. It'd be cool if you could do like stuff like, you know, like the Battle of Endor or not the Battle of Endor, uh, Hoth. You know, like if they had stuff like that with the the X wings and the you know, yeah. That'd be cool, but I think like if the whole game's like that, it would tend to get stale. But then again, I mean, I'm not saying that's that's like you know set in stone. Like, as long as the gameplay is is fast and fun and maybe has variety to it, like I'm sure you can choose different. Because obviously, there's different characters. I'm assuming like you you're, you can have someone who plays for the uh, I was gonna say like the rebels. Yeah, yeah, the, the New Republic or the uh, the Fallen Galactic Empire guys. Like, so that means it's probably different starships. So that sounds like there's a bit of variety. Um, uh, I guess because I'm looking, I'm looking back on like some like Star Fox, and that's this is just this is like a personal matter. I never got into Star Fox. I always thought the gameplay got kind of dull because you're only playing in starships. So it's like I don't know, it just wasn't really for me. I'm I'm excited for the game. I'm just thinking like I'm more excited for the story and the characters more so than the gameplay. But um, I would love to be surprised with fun gameplay because it sounds like all platforms. EA doesn't really tend to do this. Does that mean that the Switch is getting this? Well, it's just the platforms they mentioned. So it's you know the PS4, oh, I see. Xbox I, I thought, One, and uh, yeah. I, I, thought, I thought it just meant that PS4 and PC are getting the VR. But I thought it meant like Xbox and Nintendo are getting this as well. But maybe no. not. Yeah. Unfortunately, not. son of a gun. <laughs> I didn't realize I, when they announced this that it was only going to be thirty nine ninety nine. That that's yeah, cool, yeah. but that should also kind of give you an idea. Maybe the scope of this, like maybe the single player isn't the longest, and maybe it actually, like you said, doesn't have the biggest variety. But this is still something I kind of want to check out. Yeah. Oh no, here it is. Yeah, it says it's coming to the PS4 and the Xbox and PC. Okay, so you're right. It's not mentioning the Switch, but it's available on those three platforms. I mean, I never yeah. say never, but I I don't know. Maybe eventually. I just I just, I, I just get so bothered by by that. I, I know we talked about it. We talked about it before in the podcast. I've complained enough. I just hate how EA does not does not support the Switch. It bothers me. All right, uh, moving right along. Unannounced Kingdom Hearts project seemingly leaked. Uh-oh, calm down, Corey. <laughs> Details <laughs> pertaining to unreleased Kingdom Hearts game have been discovered in the hidden files of a recently launched website for mobile game, Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. While data mining the Dark Road website, Reddit user Skullbodge found a logo below for a project called Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, which appears to be unrelated to the forthcoming mobile title. Um, So, yes, here we go again. I, I got Kingdom Hearts three a, a year ago, and I thought I thought we were done. Clearly, we're not. They announced I think this Dark Road like a year or maybe earlier this year. I forget, and I don't even know what that is. I don't I don't know what if I know there's a Kingdom Hearts mobile game. I don't know if this is a different one or like an expansion to it. Um, but yes, the apparently there's gonna be a new Kingdom Hearts game. I honestly, from what this sounds like, I feel like it. It might be like a, uh, what's it called, a rhythm game or something like that. Maybe a spinoff for the Switch. I feel like they always put a Kingdom Hearts game on Nintendo consoles. Also, hey, uh, maybe that means Sora could be in Smash. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, technically, technically, he has every right to be oh, in yeah. a Smash game. I mean, sure. he's been on Nintendo consoles. Maybe this, that'd be a good tease. Like Maybe as they get closer to revealing this, they'll... You'll just see like his hand come up with the keyblade and then a, a, an envelope in his hand, and then and then you'll die a little on the inside. As <laughs> it, 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 well, no, you won't. You won't die on the inside. You'll just start. You'll be crying tears of joy. That's what I should say. I, yeah, thinking about this, I am actually getting pretty excited because really the subtitle has nothing to do with the kind of gameplay Kingdom Hearts is. So this is probably or it, it could just be another action RPG. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, at least. 
you know this better than I do, but didn't some of the games that were released on this on the Nintendo consoles, mainly I think mainly mainly the uh, the portable ones, the Game Boy Advance and the DS, they were all like gimmicky, right? They had like weird little gimmicks. It wasn't like the like the traditional Kingdom Hearts gameplay. It was, like so, it's possible that they'll give the, the Nintendo title the uh, the gimmicky, yeah, you know, like. According to the subtitle, it sounds like it could be a base game, just because. But who knows? Well, I I will say they eventually did make them closer to what they normally were. Like the Kingdom Hearts game on the 3DS Dream Drop Distance is actually a pretty good Kingdom Hearts game. Uh, it's it's got different elements in it. It's got like Pokemon elements in it, weirdly enough. Um, huh. But uh, also the one on the the PSP Birth by Sleep, that one was pretty good too. Like more like a, a traditional Kingdom Hearts game, where you just you know move your character. There's an attack button. There's your command deck. You know, it was really only the the GBA one, uh, Chain of Memories. That was like the card game, and then um, the the ones on the DS were they they were kind of like halfway to being like a traditional Kingdom Hearts game, but they were also like a little more gimmicky, and I really like the DS ones as much. Um, but yeah, I am excited for this. I honestly, I got more excited thinking that this could just be like a new, like 3d JRPG game, like traditional kingdom hearts games. Uh, I, I'm really speculating if this could be on the switch. I think that would be a, a good move considering there is, they, they generally put a kingdom hearts game on Nintendo consoles. So that, that'd be pretty dope. Although I, maybe I shouldn't get my hopes up too much. Uh, but this is cool. Anyways, let's move on. AT&T, looking to sell WB Interactive, includes studios like Rocksteady and NetherRealm. AT&T is reportedly looking to sell the Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment Gaming Division, which includes studios like NetherRealm, Avalanche, and Rocksteady. The deal could be valued at $4 billion, and there's reported interest from companies like Take-Two, EA, and Activision Blizzard. I don't like to hear any of that. Yeah, no, like, stay away. Get these companies yeah, out of here. Cause, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with Take Two, but uh, EA, get out of here. Take Take Two, I think, could be worse than EA. It's a big uh, conglomerate. I think they own like part of Epic Games. So they own like oh. the people who made like Pum, PUBG. It, it's a big like Chinese company that buys like a bunch of game studios. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not a friend of that either. Yeah. <laughs> now, that, now that you explain that, like, yeah, it's kinda... yeah, I, 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 I hate to hear those those publishers looming over these studios because, I, I mean, Rocksteady they've been quiet for quite some time now, but they, all those Batman games were fantastic. Nether Realm they're killing it with Injustice and Mortal Kombat, and uh, what was the other one? Avalanche. I, I can't for the life of me. Hang on, let me see if the article mentions say their games. I can't think of any, but I know they make good stuff. Let me just Google quickly Avalanche. Oh, there's yeah, also... Uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to do the same thing. <laughs> there's also, like, a supposed, like, Harry Potter RPG made from uh, Rocksteady, and there was, like, leaked gameplay, which actually looked really cool, but that was, like, years ago, so I don't know if that's true or not. Oh, they made, like, the Mad Max game, which is really good. They make Just Cause. They made the new Rage. Okay, yeah, yeah, Avalanche makes good stuff, too. We don't want them to go, either. I think they're actually making a new game that I'm excited for. I can't remember the name of it, though. Uh, but, yeah, I want those. Yeah, they're they're all good companies. So it, it's scary to see that they're all up for sale by those big game, the, or those big shareholders, because yikes. <laughs> it's funny, because uh, I actually didn't realize that uh, AT&T was... I, I had no idea. This is a bit yeah, of a small Yeah, I, I don't either. Even, I have no idea they own them. That's so crazy. Yeah, dude. that is weird. A two hundred billion dollar debt. What the hell? It's crazy. Lot, like, lots and lots like, of money. Yeah. How how can you? Be? I don't know. Business. I, I, I love it says the the help the help chip away the help chip that away. <laughs> I'm pretty sure four billion dollars is not going to take it. It's not going to help out when you're debt 200. means nothing. Everyone just max yeah. out all your credit cards. Who who cares? When you're when you're that much in debt, you might as well just. They screw it. Go it's all in. Never, You're dying with your away. debt. Your family yeah. will be paying it off for eons, millennia even. Oh man, that's more money than some countries probably profit in like ten years. That's correct. I don't think I'll see a billion dollars in my lifetime. So, yeah. No, I would say probably not. Probably not even a million. Me neither. Uh, 
A uh, very short news story here. I thought this was cool. Persona 4 Golden is now available on PC. Persona 4 Golden was arguably the best version of Persona 4. And it was just locked on the PlayStation Vita. It finally got a release on Steam. And I believe it was like the top selling game for a couple days after its release. But it's out there. I would love to check this game out if I had like an extra 100 or 120 hours. But I hear it's really good. That's all. Up next here, we got a little bit of leaks about Gods and Monsters gameplay and, and excuse me, an in-development build of Ubisoft's Gods and Monsters seemingly leaked onto Google Stadia last night. Well, it wasn't last night. It was uh, the June 12th, so three days ago, with players posting a series of gameplay clips to Reddit. We were first brought to the leak's attention by user The Moon Assaults, who posted a clip of Gods and Monsters gameplay to the Google Stadia subreddit. It looks like the game appeared under the codename Orpheus for a limited time on Google Stadia app before quickly being taken down. That didn't stop some fortunate players from playing and capturing footage first, some of which you can check in the embedded tweet below. That's on this IGN article. Of course, bear in mind that the early build clearly was never meant to be shown to the public. A lot of the footage features placeholders, assets, and its menus look graded wholesome from Ubisoft's other Gression open world game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, I wanted to point this out again, keeping with this trend of game studios just copying Nintendo. Gods and Monsters is straight up Breath of the Wild. It's just Breath of the Wild with like some different features here and there. But hey, it, it looks good. I want to play it. If you hey, can we'll find it. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say one little thing I will say is like I, I kind of made like a joke earlier, but the game was copying Mario Odyssey or not Mario Odyssey. Well, you mentioned that, but like how so? Like, oh, it's copying uh, 3D World and Yoshi's Crafted World. Like I'm perfectly fine with games that are clearly inspired by other games. I mean, I, I think that there's a fine line between inspiration and copying. So I think this is just a good, a good example of like where it looks like Breath of the Wild. It may play like Breath of the Wild, but as long as it's different enough, uh, that's perfectly okay. And it yeah. Can be a great game on its own. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I almost was gonna say like, how do you feel about stuff like this? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I read your mind, Corey. That's why I knew you were gonna ask that question. Because like, I mean, I I can't tell you how many countless Smash Brothers clones I've played because there's nothing quite like the platform fighter that is Smash Bros. You know. I think Smash. I I, I can't really put it in the what Super Smash Brothers does differently than the other like fighting games but whatever it does it does it so well and i think especially after smash ultimate it really is the best fighting game of all time just yeah like it's not it's not just the diversity it's not just the characters there's just so much to it i mean i don't, I don't know i mean like mortal kombat and the marvel vs. capcom games and street fighters are i'm sure are great but no no like smash bros just does it great they, they they do it the best i can't explain why but then if there are any other people, any clones of that, I mean, I get it. People just say this is this is the winning formula. Let's use this as a foundation to make a new game. And I think there's nothing wrong with that, you know. The only problem is they don't got Mario. Well, that's a, that's that's when it comes to copying. Like if you make your own fighting, um, unfortunately, that's not that's not that's not legal. But <laughs> if you want. to... I mean, just 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 make you just make your character orange and green, orange shirt, green overalls, and he's a electrician who lives in Sacramento. Perfect. Give him a beard, not a mustache. It, exactly. <laughs> and and turn his hat backwards. Ooh, I like it. Name him Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, name, uh, he, he's he's not, he, he's Russian. Name him. Like, <laughs> Uh, Gustavo. I, yeah, Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> What's that name? Super Ivan Brothers. Mark. Nikolai. <laughs> Nikolai. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Super Nikolai Brothers. An M for the M hat that he's wearing. To, okay. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, so this doesn't really do much for me, but I figured I'll cover it real quick because I thought it was kind of significant. Destiny 2 next gen details beyond light expansion revealed. I guess Bungie had a big like event like last week talking about what they're going to do with Destiny 2 moving forward. Bungie has revealed new details on the future of Destiny 2. 
including Destiny 2 Universe Season of Rivals, the Destiny 2 Beyond Light expansion, and the news that anyone who owns a version of Destiny 2 will be, a, it will be able to upgrade to PS5 and Xbox Series X versions for free. Bungie further detailed the Destiny 2 on PS5 and Xbox Series X will run at 4K 60 frames, and all expansions owned by players will carry over at no extra con or no extra charge. Furthermore, Destiny 2 will support intergenerational crossplay with console families, PS4 to PS5, and Xbox One, to Xbox Series X, with the hope that full crossplay between all consoles will arrive in the next year or so. Destiny 2 Beyond Light, the next expansion for Destiny 2, will be released on September 22nd, 2020, and will allow players to venture to Orphea, Europa, Europa, there we go, nailed it, Jupiter's frozen moon, Guardians will be able to brave the unrelenting glacier frontier, infiltrate the Golden Age Braytech facility, and uncover the secrets that lie deep under the ancient ice. Guardians will also be able to wield a mysterious new power called Stasis, which is a new elemental power that will join Ark, Solar, and Void and give Titans, Warlocks, and Hunters new ways to play. A new six-person raid? Okay, we're not going to go too much further in there. Uh, what I read, though, was all cool. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. I, I mean, I think it's cool there's intergenerational crossplay being worked on. That's a big word. I like it. <laughs> um, I, I think it's neat that you can just carry over like all your stuff and get a free version of the game on the next gen consoles. I mean, I own destiny two for PS four. I mean, I guess that I get it for PS five. That's neat. I, I was like, I'm liking what I'm reading. I'm, I'm happy for Bungie. I don't know if you knew this, Mike, but they did have a deal with Activision and they were luckily able to get out of there and take their project with them, which is destiny two. So good for them. And it seems like they're doing well on their own right now. Okay, cool. Um, speaking of Bungie, we also have another story here. I thought this was kind of neat. New Bungie IP is comedic and will feature whimsical characters, according to job listing. A Bungie job listing has indicated that the studio's new IP will be comedic and feature whimsical characters, a posting for an incubation art director, as discovered by the Game Post. On the Bungie career portal, asked potential applicants if they would like to work on something comedic with light-hearted and whimsical characters, giving us a teensy glimpse at the tone of the studio may be setting for its next-gen game beyond the destiny. Really nothing much to go off, but uh, hey, they're working on a new game. There you go. I I mean, that makes sense, you know. They, yeah, they, they usually go for, you know, one game per console life cycle. I, I think they did a good job with Destiny. I mean, they can probably just keep doing Destiny for the time being, but... I always like to see what Bungie's next game is. They kind of hooked me in with Halo. They, get, they did a good job. <laughs> uh, now it is the Level With Me podcast. We do always have to talk about Nintendo news. Unfortunately, this week, it's not good Nintendo news. Nintendo oh, confirms no. extra 140,000 user accounts have been compromised. Nintendo has confirmed that a total of 300,000 user accounts have been compromised up 140,000 cases above the 160 already declared in April. In an update on the Nintendo Japan support page, the company states that an additional 140 Nintendo network IDs have been accessed malici maliciously. The passwords of these accounts have been reset and the owners contacted directly. In April, Nintendo began investigating reports of unauthorized account breaches, leading to an, estimate, an estimation that 160 Nintendo network IDs have potentially been affected, at the time, Nintendo clarified that this was not a security breach of the Nintendo network, but that appear that it appeared the login data for accounts had been acquired by other means. At 300,000 cases, Nintendo assures that less than 1% of Nintendo network IDs has been illegally logged into. The company is currently in the process of refunding users who have purchases made using their account. These purchases will have been made using linked PayPal or bank accounts. As credit card numbers are not part of the information that was compromised, Nintendo states that a third party may have been able to see nicknames, date of births, country slash regions, and email addresses. All this is uh, very unfortunate. Uh, definitely set up two-factor authentication. I was about to say that's a really easy way to help protect yourself is just that little extra layer of security is so important, guys. Make sure you do that. Yeah. And uh, make sure, you know, 
if you also just want to be safe like go just take all this information off your accounts like get rid of your credit card or paypal that might be linked to nintendo if you are worried um yeah i, I mean realistically it is only one percent of users i think it said so it's not that major but it, yeah. just if you want to be safe but then yeah because yeah i think like yeah but one percent of users and is it like it's still hundreds of thousands significant of yeah definitely yeah um, okay, so we've hit the point of the podcast where I just have, like, a bunch of game trailers from games that are being announced, and I kind of just want to talk about them. I'm just kind of okay. spent spamming a bunch of them to you right now, Mike. Uh, oh, let's no. start with the, the first one here, which is called West of Dead. Uh, so this looks pretty neat. This is like a, uh, like, isometric, I think is the word, or almost like a Diablo-type camera where you're, you play okay. it, you play as this, like, ghost rider looking cowboy dude and you go around this these like dungeons and it's kind of like this uh very stylized like uh almost like um mad uh mad oh sin city that's the word i was looking for i was thinking a mad world that's the other game the i do like yeah where it's like very like stylized bold everything's like living bold and uh is the only color red like red is the only, only color because black and white i thought it was a really cool sin city style but anyway well well there's actually a lot of colors it's not just black and white but um no, but in mad world I oh mad no mad world is like that i i thought you meant this west of oh. dead game um but this looks neat it's i think it's i don't i don't know if it's a roguelike actually i just watched some of the gameplay but it's kind of like you know you go around these rooms and there's different scenarios in them with enemies and you essentially, it's like a shooter, and it looks like there's also melee, but kind of like Diablo-like, except I don't think, way less loot, I would assume, and more like just an adventure game where you find like power-ups here or there. But it looks really, like the graphical style looks really cool, the combat looks fun. Uh, I was liking what I'm seeing. Uh, next up, System Shock. They showed some gameplay. This is a remake of the original system shock which i i think is pretty old uh but i like what what's that i'm sorry i said i i can't say i heard of that oh okay well it, it's like what inspired games like bioshock kind of oh, okay cool but uh this is it's like set in the like very far future almost like cyberpunk elements where you can install like mods and there's like a, a bunch of hacking you're in kind of like it almost reminds me of like alien themed like technology, like what the future or what the past thought the future would look like. Um, but it's like a, a first person adventure game type of thing where you kind of go through like collecting your stuff, encountering each different room and just seeing if there's enemies to deal with or loot to find. Or maybe there's puzzles or maybe there's like a keypad and it's like, OK, I got to find the password or maybe there's like a. Like, there's, like, fallout elements. Like, oh, maybe there's a, a safe, and I got to find a key or, like, a key card to get into the, the lock. And it's kind of got, like, very old school, like, RPG elements. Like, there's a, a big, like, health and energy in indicator at the top uh, right. And there's, like, a vitals in the top left. And you can, like, install mods to, like, add HUD elements or remove them to get rid of your HUD elements. Because maybe you want, like, a, a more health mod or, like, a bigger damage or... a uh, damage modifier mod or something like that it seems really cool and it was really nice like seeing the game visually it, it's beautiful neat uh next up this was the last one i sent you because i sent them in the wrong order this is 30xx so this is actually a sequel to a game called 20xx which is just basically a Mega Man roguelike game um and this is a, it's just a sequel to that but it's more in the style of like the Mega Man. Z Zero games, the ones that came to like the Game Boy Advance, and I think it looks okay. really cool. It also has co-op, so that looked like a lot of fun. Uh, and then the other, the last video here, but I got more coming in. It's called Boyfriend Dungeon, and this is essentially again kind of like an isometric view, like kind of slanted top down, and uh, this is a combination of like a Diablo or like dungeon crawler type game with like a dating sim. So <laughs> when you're in the open world, you can go talk to, I believe the creator or developer said there were like six or seven different choices. There were like two men, two women, two non-binary and a cat. 
and you can essentially, you know, hang out with them and maybe do activities, like maybe go on a date, maybe you, you do something else, wink, wink. Um, but they're all weapons, and whichever one I guess you're with is your weapon in the dungeon. So in the uh, gameplay that I watched here, there's like this this very attractive, in shape man with this like leather jacket with spikes, like oh. he's a little edgy. He's oh, like, really, Corey? Do you tell? Yeah, and uh, he's got like this nice, long, flowing hair. He's got like a little like uh, scruff with the mustache and the beard, but uh, he's this really cool, edgy red sword. So if you want cool red edgy sword man, you know, d- go get a coffee with him. I bet he likes his coffee black. Looks like he would. Uh, but this game looks great. I- I'm very excited to see more about that game. Not only does it just look fun to play, but the the whole aspect of it's a dating sim I think is funny. Also, like when you do stuff with whatever character you're interested in, they can like level up from that. Or it, it maybe sometimes you'll offend them. And instead of a good thing, you'll get like a bad stat on your weapon because they they got sad or they got upset, you know. Interesting. Kind of reminds me of that one game, Honey Pop. That's about like a dating sim and Tetris put together or something. Like yes, like how yes. they combine they, they combine the genres. It's kind of strange. Okay, so I'm I'm spamming you with some more trailers here. Let's start with oh, Iron. Gosh, Har- slow down. <laughs> Iron Harvest. Uh, so this looked really neat. This is like. Uh, it's essentially like what if there was World War Two? Well, it's Iron Harvest 1920, so I assume it's World War One, but they had mechs. So I don't oh, know. Wow. I don't know if this is like a, um, like a strategy game, kind of like um, Advanced Wars, if you will, or I don't know if this is like a, uh, like a Starcraft type game. What are those called? I forget what they're called. You know what I mean? Uh- Real-time strategy game, yes. RTS? Yes, yeah. RTS. There we go. So it might be one of those, but I really like the aesthetic. Like, it's very beautiful seeing these, like, World War One themed areas. Like, I'm looking at this one, like, nice field. There was the, like, snowy... It was, like, a really nice, like, snowy battlefield. And then they just pop in, like, these really neat, like, mech designs. I was really digging it. It looked cool. Next up here, we got Bravery Network Online. I, I don't know if this is, like, an online demo or that's part of the name but this look kind of interesting so you essentially have it's like it almost looks like pokemon but instead of having different pokemon it's almost like an rpg where you have like a team of five and you're fighting a other teams and like each team member kind of has like strengths and weaknesses i was also kind of digging the style of this game it kind of looks like it, it looks like a cartoon like a modern cartoon you'd see on like cartoon network something like that it's okay. really neat yeah I was liking it. Uh, next up here, not much is known about this one. This is called Transformers Battlegrounds. Um, and this potentially could be a Transformers-inspired XCOM-like game where you move around your Autobots, I assume, and you know, kind of like put them behind cover or give them abilities. But as of right now, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, for all I know, this could be like a, a Transformers Battle Royale. I don't know. Um but I thought that looked kind of interesting, so I want to keep my eye on that. Uh, next up, we yeah. have a game called Mortal Shell. This game is literally these developers are just trying to make the their best version of a Dark Souls-like game. So, of course, I have to shout this one out. It looked really cool. It literally is like they're just trying to make their own version of a Dark Souls game like the way they would want to make it. You know what I'm saying? I can understand that. I mean... I think it's again like kind of like we're kind of what we were talking about, yeah. Yeah, like it's it's if it's a winning formula and you want to be inspired by it, go on, give it a shot. You know, I, I but I want to say they're almost doing it because they really respect and love souls, from what I understand. Like they're not even just doing it because they're like, oh, people like this genre. They're trying. They respect the genre that they want to make like a really good one of them, and I respect I, that. I, yeah, and I, I get that. I do. That's why I. I mean, I love the Metroidvania game styles I, would, I, I that's why i would love to make one of those true not just gonna, yeah, i get, not, you, not just I get a, you yeah so anyway um next up we have demon turf this looked pretty neat so this is like a 3d platformer this kind of reminded me of like super mario 64 a little bit but almost like the bubsy games because everything was like a, a 2d sprite 
but it's a 3D platformer. So, you know, every sprite has like eight or 10 frames of different like angles, depending on where you're at. It looked really cool, like visually. And also the gameplay looked like a lot of fun. Like I said, kind of like a, a Super Mario 64, like a something like like a collectathon, a collectathon, a 3D platformer. But it has like pixel art because everything's sprites. But I thought that looked neat. It's uh, it's uh, quoting itself as the next big indie 3D platformer. So you know, maybe that means something. Finally, here we have uh, maybe the most mindless of games, but it does look the most pretty. Uh, we have 11 minutes of Second Extin- Extinction, which is pretty much a Left 4 Dead style game, but instead of shooting hordes of zombies, you're shooting hordes of dinosaurs. And it looks really cool. It's, a- wrong <laughs> it's actually very beautiful. I believe this is a next-gen game, whereas most of the ones I just talked about will probably be on everything. Uh, but yeah, it looks it looks really fun. Uh, but that wraps up that long list of games I think are cool. Uh, I just wanted to promote them if anyone's looking for some something a little bit different. You know, most of those aren't like just the the new like AAA game. Uh, but anyways, I'm good. Uh, do you want to get into our weeks, or did you have any more stories that maybe I missed? Um, I don't think I have any stories right now. I'm trying to think. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have anything that we discussed enough. But, uh, I mean, I'm fine to go on to, to the next phase of the podcast if you're ready. Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, why don't you start, Mike? What'd you do with your week? Okay. Well, kind of like what we talked about earlier. Um, did a lot of uh, stuff for the house. For the most part, I was pretty busy, worked on some videos, but I did get some time to watch some shows and play some games, which is why I think, you know, but, but the, the main reason why we're at this point of the podcast, I did complete watching Korra, uh, the, the, uh, the Legend of Korra, so I think early, a couple weeks ago, when I mentioned that I was starting to, beginning to watch it, how I was re- really looking forward to it, because it was, you know, the second series to take place after the uh, the Avatar show, a- Avatar: The Last Airbender. Right. And it was funny because I w- people warn me that the game is very, uh, it's divisive and there's a lot of like, it gets very political and you know it causes controversy. People hate the show for these reasons. Like, like so, I was kind of concerned. Like, man, I wonder why this show has so many people like divided. You know, and I think I might have mentioned early on that someone did spoil that one of the most controversial parts about the show is that Cora is a lesbian. And so, of course, after I thought, well, I don't care. I mean, it, it, like, you know, and I'm not trying to just say that to please the listeners. I'm, I'm being serious. Like, okay, well, whatever. If, that, if that's her character, let's see how it is, right? And, of course, um, I'm going to I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. Like, when you get introduced to Cora, yeah, she's a very strong female character. And I, in my mind, was thinking, okay, so in my in my mind, she's supposed to be a lesbian. So that, I guess that kind of fits the character. But then, sure enough, spoiler warning for those of you who have not watched the show yet. I, w- I was still recommend the show. I think it was worth. It was still pretty fun to watch. So spoiler warning. All right, spo- spoiler warning is over. She's not a lesbian. As you go, as you go through the first sh- season, like she gets like romantic feelings for some of the other characters who are men. So like you know, I'm like, okay, like I I, I guess they were just lying about that. But uh, the cool thing is that I like her as a strong female character. I actually wish there was more of those in movies and TV shows and video games. Like, again, I'm not just trying to say that to be a sellout, to be a sellout. Like, my favorite video game character of all time is Samus from Metroid, a strong female character. I mean, I, and I love it when you see them in, in games, like, or in movies and TV shows. I think there's not, there's, there's not enough of them. So in a positive way, when you do see them, it's refreshing because it's not just, it's not just another, you know, like, like a master chief character or like, you know, the, the generic bald guy who has a real like stern look in his face and can, it can beat everyone up. Like I like having a character like Korra who is strong and in this case of the show, a little overpowered, but you know, it was fun to watch. So anyway, to speed things up, the show went through a bit of a roller coaster for me because people warned me that 
everyone hated season two, and then they said season three it gets pretty good, and then they then they, everyone says season four is terrible. So I was like, okay, I'm a little concerned now because season one, uh, you know, besides a couple slow parts of the show where I thought like the story wasn't really going anywhere. They were slowly established. I, I thought maybe it was just to set the tone of the, who, who the villain is. Because the villain, because by the end of the first season, I thought, wow, this villain was incredible. The, like, what their mindset was, like, what the villain was trying to do was pretty, it, it, it was a good plot, to say the least, for season one. And in the end, I really enjoyed it. And then, of course, season two was not bad. It was not bad by any means, but I understand why people, why people don't like it. And the problem is season two it reminds me a little bit of Dragon Ball Z, because the uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender was a show that, like, from there's there's three seasons, and from season one to season three, you know what the end goal is. It's all about Avatar, about the Avatar Ang, the little boy saving the world. He has to stop the. I'm sure you heard the memes. Oh, it all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. It's all about him defeating the Fire Nation, and he does that in the end. Yeah. Against. Yeah. Again, spoiler warning. I think I just ruined the show for you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, in this and and Korra, there's four seasons, and every season, you know, it, it has they're consistent with each other for the most part. Like like they go into the one goes into one season goes into the next. But it's like Dragon Ball Z, where there's just like another villain that they have to fight. Every season has a new villain, and they have to. It's like, oh, okay, we beat this villain. Season two gets introduced, and now we got to defeat this villain. And then season three, great, now we have another villain to fight, and each villain is more and more challenging, which can be okay. I mean, Dragon Ball Z seems to have, seems to have pulled off that like linear progression of like oh, a new, more how powerful villain. But the problem is, it got to the point where season one had a great villain. Again, I see season one is the best part of the show. Season two, to not, I, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm just going to describe that season two. The villain is so powerful that. It, that, like it was kind of to the point where like she clearly can't beat this villain, but then she tries harder and she still can't beat him. But then she believes in herself and tries again. She still can't beat him. And then in the end, she somehow she, she somehow beats him. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. But so it was a little disappointing. But the thing is, because the villain, like the scope of this of the story was so deep and so vast, it's like my god, like this should have been. The culmination of the entire series, like this, should have been the, the the last season of Korra. This should have been the final villain, and it wasn't. It was the second villain that she had to fight, and it's like, oh great! So now any other villain that she comes across can't be as powerful as him, because like then th- they will be no match for Korra if she's if she's able to to defeat this guy. Right. So that's so then of course when season three came along, it was a be- it was a better better story, better villain, and. Uh, it was simplistic, but it was good, and it, it caught your attention. And but then I realized, wait a minute, like why is this villain a threat to everyone? Like why can't Korra just because the the Avatar is like a just like a, a super powerful being? So like why can't she defeat this guy after defeating the villain from season two? That's kind of like my argument. Right. They kind of they, they kind of explain like, oh because after it happened again like just to avoid spoilers, what happened in season two made her weaker because of these reasons. Oh, she, I'm like oh. Well, Whatever, like it, it, it was really cool to watch, but then it, it was to go from one villain to this film was like, yeah, I don't know. And then season finally, season four came up, and this is supposed to be the most controversial season because uh, now I thought that again, once again, similar to this, uh, this reminded me a little bit of season one, where the villain it, it's a good villain, good plot, good end goal for what the villain wants to do. It's it's interesting. It actually reminded me a lot of Avatar. Like Avatar did have some like you know like spiritual meaning and everything that they did like magic or whatever, but ultimately it's 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 human versus human and the conflicts are between the different nations and each nation has the ability to to manipulate an element. And in this, we have another another force rising up, you know, among the, among these nations, and it, it was just again it was simplistic, but it, but it was it was it was cool. Um, and apparently every season of Avatar actually, or of, of Korra, delves into a branch of government or like a outcome of government, which is pretty interesting. So apparently, uh, I think season the last season was about dictatorship, and that's kind of like a tease of what this new villain is. But then at the very and then so, all in all, the show was kind of it was it was cool. A couple wonkiness and some questions I had coming up, but in the end, I'm like, oh, you know what, this is okay to watch. Definitely not my favorite season. I I would say it goes. 
Season one was the best. Season three was the second best. I guess season three is next, and season two was the worst. It, I, I I would have to go in that order. But then in the end, again, I have to just this this is the thing. Spoiler warning, but I had, this is kind of like where the, all the controversy all came together at the very last episode because basically at the very end of the show, it ended very abruptly. Like it kind of just ends. Like, oh, okay, despite the fact that we just defeated four your villains over the course of like two years of you know for the show and there's clearly going to be more villains popping up at some point <laughs> at this rate they kind of just say oh let's go on a vacation and just forget about our lives. and that's kind of how the show ends and in that in that final scene it's it's heavily implied that while she went on this vacation she has romantic feelings for a female character uh, asami who was a, a major character at all for all four Seasons, but even as even Asami was not. It, there's no. There's nothing in the show that implies she would have romantic feelings towards a woman because, like, she actually has relationships with men throughout the show, and so does Korra. So that's why I'm thinking, like, so why is it at the very end? They're like they are obviously they obviously are attracted to each other, and like you know are now going to begin a relationship, and that's how the show ends. And then that, that's when when the show when then when I turn my TV off, I'm like, oh, so that's what people were talking about. That was that was the controversy <laughs> thing that people were talking about. And I'm like, you know what? I agree. That is kind of silly. Not the fact that they're having a, a relationship, but I just felt like it was so it was not appropriately timed, and there was no build up. It's like how could, technically, let's say it was the inverse, or throughout the entire series, all four all four seasons, Asami and Court are lesbians, like. Yeah, like whatever. It's 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 the I was not. It's twenty twenty now, but like when the show came out, it was like twenty thirteen. But you know, it's you know, it's it's modern times. That's accepted nowadays. Right. But then what? But then what about the very last episode? Then the Sami and Korra fall in love with two men. You'd be like, well, wait a minute. I thought they were lesbians. So that's where it's like it's not. It's, it's not. It's not that I have a problem with them being in a relationship. It's like, but where did this come from? There's no build up for it, and that's how you end the show. Right after defeating like a crazy villain, that was and I don't know. It was just like it was very, very. It was off putting because it was so unexpected, but not to the point where it was like, oh wow, what a twist! It was like, wait, what? Like why? Like why? Like why throw that throw that in there? It, 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 it felt very forced, and I think that's the worst part that it was very like forced to be like, see guys, look, we we have we have this in the show just just to please those people, maybe just just to please the. Uh, the LBGT community, maybe like I think that's what, and that's the problem. Like you shouldn't be, it shouldn't be in order to to please people. To, 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 like, like I mean, I say just just have a lesbian character. Like let us know throughout the sh- okay, like that's just who, who they are, and I can accept it. But then it's and again, I'm not, I'm not mad that you made the, that you made her a lesbian. It's like, but why make her a lesbian now? It, it just seems very odd, and hence hence the whole controversy. I don't think it ruined the show, but I thought, yeah, I, I can see, like bothered by that at the very end it was it was very it's just it's strange to say at the very least huh yeah again i would highly recommend you watch well i would, I would definitely recommend you watch avatar and eventually watch core like i said i still enjoyed it I still, like sat I, it still sucked me in and i caught myself like watching one episode after the other because i was like oh i kind of want to see where this goes so definitely a good show i would say i'll give it like a six out of ten yeah it's like like b minus c plus great you know it, uh, it is hard always to live up to like the original one, you know what I mean? And I do think that's another problem is that it's living in the shadow of Avatar, which was so good. But I don't know, and then that's why I can't really fault the show. Uh, apparently, I did learn that the show did have different writers. I think one of the co-creators worked on this, and then someone from Family Guy helped direct the show. And maybe that explains some of the more mat- mature themes throughout, throughout the show. I, I, I didn't really mention that, but like, obviously the characters are are older than the characters from Avatar, so they're a bit more like they're they're like actual like young adults. And uh, I guess maybe that's why they tried to force these like mature themes into the show to appear like not edgy, but maybe just to appear more apt and, and like relevant to like to the viewers who grow who grew up with Avatar and like. Eight years later, okay, like, well, if our viewers grow up, then they'll want more mature content. So that's maybe why they thought to 
change the show up a little bit while still trying to capture the magic of the of the show Avatar. But then it's like, yeah, but they, they still can't show death. There's like barely any blood because it, it, it's a Nickelodeon TV show. Like Nickelodeon Studios made this, so whenever like like there's even times where like clearly this character died, but they can't show it. So they'll, they'll just pan the screen away, and then everyone's like sad, like oh no, they're no longer oh. with us. Like they won't they, they won't even use the words she's dead or she's she's killed. It's like <laughs> oh, they're no longer with us. She's gone. And I'm like oh okay. So it's like it's like they, they're held back. They're held back from that. The, like, it's the limitations. The, the limitations of them being a Nickelodeon show are kind of like apparent, and it's a little bit annoying. But anyway, so yeah, that was Legend of Korra again. I still enjoyed it despite the wonkiness. Um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, and what I've been playing, uh, I, I finished up Donkey Kong uh, Donkey Kong sixty four, but early last week, like shortly after our last podcast recording. I wanted to play my Super Nintendo games again, but then I packed up all my video game consoles. All I have left is the Switch, because, like, that, that'll that be the one console I still have unpacked. You know, it's easy it's easy to pack up. So, so I, I couldn't really play... I was gonna... I, I couldn't really play my original Super NES, which I, I, I like to do, but luckily, the Nintendo Switch, as I'm sure many of you know, does have Super NES games on it. Now, not not many, but they, it, has, it has some gems on it. And one of which is Super Mario World. And this is what I wanted to talk about earlier. So, you mentioned that you never completed the game fully, right? That's correct. Okay, well, I will say, if because you you can obviously play it on Nintendo Switch, I would highly recommend you do it. And I will say this, I mean, I've played this game countless times, so this is not like me giving you like a first impression. I'm thinking like, just once again, I'm playing through the game, and I, I swear, even to this day, it is probably like the most like refined Mario game of all time. I think it is still, even to this day, considered to be the best 2D Mario ever made, and I have to agree with it. Like, it's just there is, I, I it's, it's kind of like one of those games where it's hard to to find something wrong with it. But besides the fact that it's it's obviously like an older game, so. There maybe there aren't quality of life things like there's no auto save. There's no, you know, it still has lives and stuff. So technically, you can get game overs, which I, I know a lot of modern games don't have that. But at the same time, it's really easy to rack up lives. The game gives you so much leeway, so much control, and it's just fun. Even the scope of the game is really big. Like, there are so many levels and so many levels that have alternative endings, or or like I should say, like second exits, like alternative exits. Which lead to different parts of the world, and like the world's not linear; it's it's spider webs everywhere. So you can technically beat the game in like under a half an hour if you know which which if you, if you know which level to beat and what exit to go to go through, which is really cool. I think the world record's like under ten minutes or something, like some crazy. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of anyway. weird. Like you don't really see that as much in other Mario ga- like modern Mario games. <laughs> Oh no! I, like, I feel like those developers knew like they could be pretty challenging and put like hidden things like that to help players and even maybe just like add like show off factors like oh I know how to get to world four from world one or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, kind of like I mean, t- yeah, it dates back even the warp pipes. Yeah, you know, like, technically you could beat the game in, like ten minutes if you if you know which warp pipe to go into. But I, I think they kept that for this. But I, I actually now that I'm, if I if I can really like mention this, all the original Super Mario games had that. Mario Brothers two had it, and Super Mario Brothers three. They all had warp pipes or ways to like skip to skip levels or skip worlds. Skip it's just kind worlds of, specifically. Yeah, that's the big thing. It's one thing to go, it's like to skip an entire world or multiple worlds is just it's it's just, it's a Mario trope, and I think it's cool that they kept it. Too, but it's 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 different because it's not like you're physically just jumping to the next level. Because like technically, this is a game where you can go back. Well, I, I guess Mario technically Super Mario Brothers three had that because you have like like a map that you can walk around. Uh huh. Like Super Mario and Super Mario World, you can you can walk the entire map and yeah, replay it felt it larger. Yeah, and I, I love that. It kind of gives you. It kind of it, it actually reminds me a bit of Donkey Kong Country. They slowly improved upon that because in the in the in the first two games. If you went to a you you chose a world that you want to play in and then, then you play that world and you can't just leave you have to actually like technically in Donkey Kong Country you have to go eventually 
beat enough levels to get the Funky Kong, and then sure, I'll take it to any world you want to go to. But then once you choose a world, then you have to go to then then you have to go to Funky Kong again to go to, to a different world. You can't just jump on your own. So it's kind of like a weird little middle step. And the same with Country Two, and then Country Three just said, "Now nah, here you can go to any, any any level you want. You can backtrack any. And basically, you can backtrack easily. That's kind of the point because one it's one giant open map." And they kind of did that with this, where they finally got to Super Mario World, and yeah, it's just one giant open map, and you can backtrack to any level you want to. Like, especially because, like, if, if you beat a level and go to an alternate exit, you go you go with a different direction. But then, hey, I, I want to go, I, I want to take path A and not path B. Then sure, go back and play it. If you missed, some levels have three exits, and you only got two of them, then go back and then go play it again and find the third exit, you know? Like, it's really... It's it's just great. Even for a Super Nintendo game, the game just looks so good. It's the the, the oh, graphics. Yeah. Are, the graphics are so simplistic, but it's so colorful and so vibrant. The sound effects are good. Music, it's fantastic. Love, it is fantastic. I, even to this day, I'll say that the the castle theme from this game is probably some is. It, I wish other castle castle themes sounded like this, like in like future Mario games, and maybe some that do take this and like remix it, but. Ugh. I really like the underwater theme. It's just oh, like yeah. the slowed down version of the normal theme. Oh yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that little that little song. I love that. Uh, I will say it's not my favorite. My favorite theme of all Mario. It, my favorite water theme is actually in Super Mario sixty four. That water theme, my god, it is it's like honey in your ears. <laughs> yeah, but those right, eels that. are down there. Oh yeah, that 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 darn eel. And I cry and have nightmares and wet but despite, myself. But despite that eel, the music in the water levels is incredible. And it, in this game, it's same thing. Great music, great gameplay, great fun. And they didn't I, need I, to make the eel so scary. Do we get off the eel thing? <laughs> <laughs> There's more scary things in this game than the eel. There's the uh, what's scary in this game? I was going to say the booze, but the booze aren't that scary in this game. Um, oh, Charging Chuck. That son of a gun. <laughs> He's not scary. Uh, He's like the the uh, uh, school like gym teacher. Like He's trying to impress like the Koopalings that are like his yeah. friends. It's like, no, I'll dude, you you're to, old. I'll show you how to get girls. You grab the phone and you just run at Mario like this. <laughs> I had to look this up because I knew I remembered this. Remember the horrible, realistic version of the eel in Super Mario Odyssey? Like they reimagine yeah. the eel. Yes. It's yeah, horrifying. It, uh, I'm looking up pictures. <laughs> yeah, at the beach level with the uh, with the water, like the giant water fountain thing. It, it was yeah, the, the one level in Odyssey, coral reef and everything. Yeah, those eels were like, whoa, these are. They've it's, never. It's, they're, they're they've, soulless. It's the same soulless eyes <laughs> as like the one from N64. Granted, N64 was more polygonal, but man, these things still have the soulless eyes that just peer into your peer into your heart and just cripple you those <laughs> those eels have never looked more horrifying i know and i think that was, that was intentional they wanted to <laughs> they want because the eels in mario galaxy had like big bulgy bug eyes and like really goofy looking teeth they were like cartoony but then these look like they're legit eels you know with that little mario flavor of graphics but my gosh <laughs> now this game now I, I guess you're right charging shocks just he's not like that there is Oh no! There, there is a fish that follows you in this game. There the, is the dry a, fish, the dry cheap cheap or whatever. Not those. There's, there's. I think it's. I think it's like uh, the name's based off Rip Van Winkle, and I think it's like Rip, Rip Van Fishy. I forget. Basically, it's a fish that sleeps, and if you get too close to it, he chases you. So that's kind of that, that can be kind of like nerve wracking when you carry a key to one of the uh, alternative exits. Oh, well, here's something I remember. There is a there is a point where Charging Chuck. Is somehow underwater, and there's like five of these sleeping fish, and he actually whistles. He gets like I guess he gets he gets his football whistle and whistles, and he wakes them all up and chases you. That's in a in one of the levels. So that was kind of funny to play that again. I will say this: I beat the game within with within the first couple of days because it doesn't take long to beat all of the normal levels, and then I eventually went back and beat all of the alternative levels. And it took like like a couple of extra days because some of these levels are challenging. I mean, they're, they're, they're nothing like crazy that I like further removed at the TV, but like there are some that are challenging and they're main 
the secret world. I don't know if you ever got that far where you there is like a special world that has the hardest level in the game. Do you like do you know about the Star Road in that game? Um you know what? I don't think I've ever heard of it. Really? I've heard okay. of the Star Roads in other Mario games. But yeah, I didn't even this... know there was one in or Super Mario World. Yeah, there's two basically there's two this is not much that much of a spoil, but there's two hidden worlds in this game. One's the Star Road or the, or the Star World. And that's basically ha- the, the world that lets you skip other worlds. Because like you, there's, there's like five points on the map that take you to the Star World. And then that like kind of goes into like a circle. And, and, that, and you can go to all the other portals or all the other all the other Star Road points that can take you all over the map. So that's, that's basically how you can skip worlds and beat the game on it beat the game in under 10 minutes or whatever so but then if there is actually a hidden a hidden exit in the star world that takes you to the special world and that's just a linear just you play one level after the other of eight levels that are the hardest in the game and some of them are really challenging like they're the ones where you can get freaking pretty frustrating but uh it's pretty cool and uh i don't want to spoil this for you because I, I would i would really love you to, if you if you do want to Corey, I want you to find this out on your on your own. I mean, it's possible that maybe you you've heard this because plenty of people have talked about it on YouTube throughout the last like twenty years. If you complete the special world, it unlocks a special mode for the game. It's not like a mode that you select in, in the start menu, but like it just, it basically changes the game. It changes your save file. It'll always be different, and is it's it pretty interesting. Siluigi. No, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> You can play as Luigi in this game, but he's just Luigi. There's no attributes. He's so just not, Luigi. He's just Luigi. It's like it's not like it's not like he has the higher jump and the fl- and the, or the, that's the, what the everyone fl- says. It's just yeah. Luigi. It's just, it's just Green Mario. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> this it, this game actually it, it holds true to that. It's just like the original Mario game where it's just Green Mario. That's it. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it still the, the game still holds up very well to this day, and I'm happy that. I'll play. I'll play that game till the, the, the day I die. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. The next game, I guess, for next week, the next game I'm going to be playing, and it is also available. It's good. Is Super Mario World Two, Yoshi's Island, which Ooh. I like, which I like more than Mario World One, and I think is probably one of the best platformers I've ever played in my in my entire life, up there with the, the Donkey Kong games. So, that'll be for next week. Now that one, I think I've definitely played a bit of that game. I didn't play the original. Uh, a lot of these games, like I, I never played on the SNES, like proper. That was a little mm-hmm. past my time. But like, you know, they released like all those games on Game Boy Advanced. And yeah, what, like yeah, all the Mario World and like they were all ported to be Super Mario Advance. There's there like four yep. or five of them, and they were all the ports of those games. Yeah, yeah. and I, I ate those I, up when I was a kid. Now, oh, yeah. granted, oh, yeah. I don't know how far I got in them. I don't think I ever beat, like, Yoshi's Island or Super Mario World or anything, but I, I did put time into them. And I like Yoshi's I mean, Island. Yoshi's Island is really good. Oh, yeah, it's phenomenal. I, 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 it's one of those games where the only thing I, I can really... That the, the, the game is very challenging. It, the game it looks adorable and cute because Yoshi, but, man, that game will... It'll prove if you're a man or a girl. <laughs> That's all I can say. Thank you. <laughs> There are some hard levels, and the hardest part of the game is good. I, I can be a completionist when it comes to those old school games. If you want to 100% Yoshi's Island, my God, man, it'll you will pull your hair out. But it's it's fun, and all Yoshi, even all the newer Yoshi games, do that. There's like so it's basically like a collectathon. It's a 2D collectathon, but the the collecting is optional. You don't have to do it. The, the whole point of the if you just want to play the game by just beating the levels, it's a blast. But if you want to try to push yourself and unlock the special levels by getting all the collectibles in each level, man, it it can really make you want to pull your hair out. But I mean, I mean, we, we can talk about it now if you want to. But I'll definitely have more to play it. Say that again. You cut off a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say like if, if you want to talk about it now, we can. But I'll definitely have more to talk about next week after I play it. Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely. Save it for next week, I think. Okay. You got anything else, or should I just rattle no, off my week? No, 
I think I uh, I rambled on too long, so it's it's your turn now. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll take the mic here. Uh, first off, I want to say I, I prepared a statement for the Level With Me podcast about uh, what I watched this week. Um, it, it, bear with me here. I'm I watched nothing but community and divers dry, diners, drive-ins, and dives. They're both good stuff. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man, it's slamming. Yep. Oh, man, it's like a part of my mouth. I'm Guy Fieri, and I'm shoving donkey sauce everywhere. <laughs> oh, oh, dog, up here, dog. This, this is some good grub, man. <laughs> Did you ever see? There was a meme where he talks very ghetto to a chef, and the chef does not like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's like, oh, dog, up here, dog, man. And the guy was just like, what? <laughs> no, I've never seen that. I got to look that yeah, up. <laughs> it, I think it's a meme. I saw it a while ago. But yeah. <laughs> All jokes, all jokes aside, I do like watching some of those cooking shows. They are kind of, I think it's just because it makes me hungry, and I kind of like seeing all the cool foods and learning about all the uh, restaurants you can go visit. Why do you watch the show, Corey? You know what? I'm going to be perfectly honest and just call myself out. I'm sorry if you... Okay. I do like diners, drive-ins, and dives, but... I, I do realize that this is not this is like content garbage, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just a man going into a restaurant and be like, Look at this good food. And like I haven't yeah, watched yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm I was gonna I was gonna agree with you. Go on. And and like I haven't watched this show honestly in a while. I, I, I do like the food network and cooking shows, but I I prefer like the competition style ones as opposed to just something like this. But yeah, like it's been a few years and I wasn't used to just how much like they just get super high def shots of like them pouring like gravy on something or, you know, pushing out a plate of like wings or barbecue. And it's just such like a a food like porn type thing. Like, oh, look how good this looks. Don't you want some of this? And and to some extent, I I do. I do respect what a guy is doing. He is helping these small places well some people might consider it helping some people might consider it blowing them up and making them not a local spot maybe they can't meet the demand maybe it ruins it i don't know i like the show because i'm kind of the same way too like i'll watch it and get a little hungry and be like oh well now i want to go eat something or occasionally i've gone to a couple of the restaurants that he's recommended and they're they're all right you know they're not bad they're not the best food i ever had but they're pretty good Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't have a lot of time to watch like any anime or I, I just didn't get around to watching any movies. I just don't think I had enough time to commit to watching a movie, but I enjoyed myself. I re- literally only watched like Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives like last night because uh, honestly, it was just a little bit before my bedtime. And I'm like, I you literally just don't want to think about anything. Just put mm-hmm. on something to put me to sleep. Also, Guy, Guy Fieri or Fieri, every say his name, like he's just a character. You know, it's good to watch him be himself. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually don't really like him as a character. I'm like, I'm like, like a weirdo, <laughs> but and it's it, I was gonna comment a little said how he like he it's it, 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 this show is just like junk food content where like yeah. he doesn't really do anything. He kind of no. just I I do agree. I think it's more about publicity. Like, hey, like here here's a, a local. A local food place that you should really consider checking out. Like, I think that that's great. But then I see it. It's like the guy just goes around and eats food. That's all he does. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he's supposed to be a chef, but I don't think he ever actually cooks anything. Not really. No. I think he had one cooking show, and now he does that, and he has like his uh, guy's grocery games. That's like a competition thing. You know. <laughs> I guess like he he was a cook. People said, "Wow, your food's terrible." And okay. But I'm really good at eating food, and then I, I think here with we have, then we have a show for you. Where you, <laughs> if, you're, if you're good at eating food, you'll be you'll, you'll be perfect for this show. He's just <laughs> a, he's just such a character. Food. His frosted yellow tipped hair, as always, he looks, backwards he looks, sunglasses. He yeah. has to have a second pair of eyes in the back of his head. Yeah, it's the I only mean, way. When, yeah, I mean when, when it's sunny out, he has to protect him somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway. I'm Gaffieri, and we're oh, rolling no. up to 
Flavor Town with my my son Hunter. <laughs> Flavor Town USA. <laughs> Hunter's like, Dad, just get away from me. No, you're gonna Dad, eat these I... garbage can nachos. <laughs> Dad, can we go home? I'm I'm so full. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I have type 2 diabetes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no son of mine <laughs> has diabetes. Here, have some chili, boy. <laughs> Dad, Great. I'm having a heart attack. No, that's just the flavor town hitting your soul. <laughs> what? I can't hear you as eat all these, these loaded nacho fries. <laughs> have you tried the deep fried bacon butter? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, unbelievable. Oh, oh. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I, that's enough hating on Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one podcast I listen to, and they always hate on him, like way worse than we do. And their fans, oh, are really? all, yeah, their fans though, will always be like, "No, no, no, he actually does a lot of good stuff, and he does. He has like a lot of charities and stuff." <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just awful for making fun of him. I, I think he literally does that, though. Like, I'm putting my tinfoil hat on. He does that just so he can have some cred because he knows the internet loves lighting his hair on fire even more. Oh, you know? really? That's interesting. I, I could see it. I mean, he could also just be a nice person, you know. <laughs> yeah, why can't he just be a nice guy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There's something wrong with this guy and his frosted, and his frosted tips. <laughs> All right. Oh man! Let's talk right. about for who needs food. You know what I need to satiate me? Video games. All right, just Cook, cooking, Mama. Put the blue Joy-Con like right in my mouth. Um, I have played more Pokemon. Let's go, Pikachu! I beat Team Rocket once. Got him. Meowth was uh, making noises. He wasn't talking, so. Oh, he's just doing his, his generic like meow, like sound effect. The, those. Yeah, the like one that's made out of pixels. Yeah, you know. whatever it is. Yeah, easy killed coughing and uh, Ekans. Oh no, you killed them. No, oh, no, they're done. Yeah, they're not even fainted. They're dead. I I oh. took care of them. <laughs> Team Rocket isn't gonna be a problem anymore. Well, specifically Jesse and James. You know, Team Rocket as a whole, I I still got to deal with them. You know, yeah. Giovanni, he might be tough, but. Jesse and James, they're they're done. You know, I really didn't do much though. I only that I'm still recording episodes of that with my buddy Abra over at Loudstone Entertainment. So we only wow. we only really got one episode session. So we'll we'll hopefully get more in the future. And again, keep checking out their channel. I we got like three parts in the bank. So shout out to I them. Actually, yeah, I, I did check out the channel this week. Actually, I probably should have mentioned it earlier. Oh, I'm cool. sorry, but I yeah, I checked it out to see what he had, and I did watch. Let's go, Pikachu. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no, I actually enjoy it. I thought it was fun to watch. I will. Some, I like your. I like the jokes you and your friend uh, Abra were coming up with. Like, Thank- you mentioned the the good value Gary. Yes. Uh, joke. <laughs> I yes. did like that. I, I will say this to all our viewers, including you: uh, the quality of the first episode not great. Uh, me and Abra worked on that, and they should be much more smoother and clearer. Just okay. Uh, just letting people know. Yeah. Um, anyways, keep moving on here. Uh, so Pokemon continues. Uh, I I've been I I've, I've just been right back in with Call of Duty. I've been really enjoying playing it. I don't know why. Shame on me. Um, yeah, shame on you. But it's fun. I I've been playing a little bit of Warzone. I feel like I've been playing more of the traditional multiplayer. Just just leveling up my guns. I've been having fun. But I should probably put my time into something more valuable than uh yeah just. Playing Call of Duty. I at least would like to stream it, but I'm still having PC issues. Like, I'll sometimes I'll play it for like an hour or two hours and nothing happens. I'm okay. But then sometimes I'll play for like a, you know, a, a short period of time. And like, I don't know if it's my CPU or if I need to clean my fans and my PC more, but it'll just like reboot my whole PC. So that kind of oh, sucks. No. I, I also, maybe I need thermal paste. I don't know. I, I'm tempted to take my rig to my uh, buddy who helped me build it. Well, he pretty much built it with another one of our friends. I I don't know really much about my PC, but uh, yeah, I I need to figure out what's wrong. Hopefully, I don't have to replace any piece. But yeah, I've been I've still been pretty addicted to that though. I've been enjoying it. Okay. Um, but I I'm even thinking like I might start. I, I feel like I I try to only have like one major multiplayer game, and 
I, I'm thinking I might start playing more Smash again because as uh, this pandemic is starting to uh, be alleviated and we can go back out in public, I would like to go back to Smash tournaments once those start becoming a thing. So maybe I'll start playing that some more. I don't know. Maybe I'll just play both because I, I do enjoy playing Call of Duty, but... You know, we'll see. There, there's a new season of content. They added, like, new maps in the game and new weapons. It's fun. It's fun. Um, so, I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast that I went to the beach. Um, so, I didn't have to drive, which was nice. So, I had about, like, two to three hours of downtime. It was about three hours, like, going there and coming home. So, uh, what what better time to play video games on your Nintendo Switch? Am I right? I agree. So... I I might have mentioned before in the podcast, but I check the eShop sales quite a bit, and whenever there's a bunch of smaller indie-type games I see, I just typically will pick them up if they're the right price. I just have a bunch on my wish list, and you know, I'll check them like every Thursday, I think is when the eShop updates. But, I, I yeah, I just decided to go through like a little bit of my backlog on the way to the beach, and uh, the one game that I actually played and completed was a game called Super KO Crush. For those of you who don't know what this is, it is a 2D platforming combat game. So it, it's kind of got... It, it's a beat-em-up. It, it's essentially a beat-em-up. You, you do have a, a gun in this game, but it's a very, like, arcade beat em up You have, like, your one button to do all your combos, but then you can kind of do, like, different tilts, and you get different special moves. Well, you have like your your normal attack, and then you have your special attack button. And as you progress, you get like other special moves you can do by kind of like Smash Brothers style. Like you press up in the special move, and you get a different attack. You press down in the special move, and get a special attack or a different special attack. You also have like a, a super you can do, where as you defeat enemies, you build up a, a meter, and it's like a big like it's it's kind of like uh, Samus's final smash, like a big like blue beam of damage. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. It was it's 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 mostly about just like trying to add a lot of variety into your combat and have a lot of combos because it gives you so much like it's very fluid and fun. It was a very short game. I probably only beat it in about like two or three hours. Um, but it does have a little bit of replayability if you want to try to hundred percent the game. Like the, basically during each of the different combat. Uh, scenarios you kind of get rated on them depending on if you get hit how quick you uh do them what your combo meter is at so there's a little bit of replayability there uh i i really enjoyed what i played of it uh and i, I thought the length it was fine you know i didn't need it to be too long i kind of assumed it was a game like that where you could pretty much beat in one sitting and I'm, I'm pretty happy that i was able to uh to go through and get done with it it was a lot of fun Unfortunately, I can't cool. comment on the music, considering I didn't listen to it, but I enjoyed <laughs> the game. Um, also, on the way back, considering I beat that, I, you know, I was like, well, I guess I can start something else on my uh, backlog here. And uh, what better game to play on the go than Doom? I started playing oh, yeah. uh, Doom 64, because I never played oh, that yeah. game. And uh, oh. I actually, oh. I didn't know this if you guys also don't know this, that this is a completely original Doom game. It's not a remake of the first Doom on the 64 with the unique sprites and everything, but it's like a completely from the ground up, like all the levels are different. I think there might even be like a, a new weapon in the game. I'm not that far into it, but I was really enjoying what I was playing of it. It felt oh, really good. It has really good lighting, surprisingly, for like an N64 game. Uh, there's a lot of like features you can adjust in this port i was surprised like you can change a lot of things even on the switch version um it was really good again didn't listen to the music probably fantastic because it's doom but yeah, yeah you, you should I, I, really your it. <laughs> I i might play this on my big like 4k tv just to say i did that and then listen to the music because yeah, i mean i never played doom 64 i was actually never a big dude but when I played Doom 2016 for the Switch, they, like the, the the music is really like they did a great oh, yeah. job with the game. It sounds so good. Yeah, and I love like I'm a big Doom guy, so I even just love the old school, you know. Oh, nice. Rendition I had no music. idea. That, yeah, I had no idea that, that when they announced that Doom 64 is coming to the Switch, I didn't. I thought I thought it was a remake or not a remake, more like a like a 
remaster, I it, guess. Pretty maybe. much. It's just a remaster. Like, okay. it's the same game. Like, it's all the 64 sprites. It's also very affordable. It's only $5. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Um. So that was a lot of fun. I'm probably going to play more of that. I I like to have, like... Uh, I like to play like one of the a game like that. I, I call them indie games, but they're they're just what I consider like smaller little games. But I mean, some of the games I buy aren't smaller. Like I have Moonlighter, which I haven't even touched yet. I have like the Shovel Knight pack, which I w- didn't even get like really halfway through all the different games on there. But I, I like to have one of these games to kind of pick away at when I'm like kind of just not doing anything or maybe like my girlfriend and me are watching something and it's like, Oh, I want to play something, but still like hang out down here. If that makes sense. Um, kind of like my off stream game, if you will. Um, even though I haven't streamed in like two weeks, but anyways, uh, last but not least, uh, this will be the first game that I will be uploading as one of the first, uh, solo let's plays that I'm doing. And it's a game called remnant from the ashes. Now, this game I've been following for about a year. I think it came out last year, officially. And it is basically a Dark Souls-like game with more more emphasis on uh, third-person shooting. The combat, or the melee combat is there, but it's not as in-depth. But since I was following this game, it was digital for, you know, a, a year, essentially. And I was always looking at it like... I really wanted to get it. It was a 40 buck digital game, which is kind of a lot. I have a weird thing in my brain where like, I don't want to get, I, I'm kind of like you, like what we were talking about earlier. Like I don't want to spend too much on digital games. So like I have kind of like my limit, but mm-hmm. if, if I'm paying a certain price, I'm almost like, well, I at least want a box at that point. So I held off and I, I honestly never thought I was going to play this game. Cause I is, it, it is kind of a smaller studio. I'm like, well, they're probably never going to put this out in a box even though i heard it sold really well digitally and was well received but uh i i I think i was just like looking up something random on best buy and i saw this game on there for sale and i'm like wait there's actually a physical version and by golly i i got it i have the physical edition yeah um so and i was really excited because uh, i don't know if i mentioned this but i thought the game looked incredibly cool i was very interested in playing this game so I, the second I knew it had a physical edition, I just, without a thought, like bought it and immediately wanted to play it. So, like I said, the gameplay is is like a third-person shooter with like Souls-like elements. Like you have your, your health meter and your stamina meter, and it's kind of difficult. Uh, one thing that's kind of neat is this game does have a difficulty s- uh, s- selection. So, you know, like Souls game, they're usually almost on like a very hard difficulty, but right now I'm playing on normal. I probably should have played on a harder difficulty because it's actually not that hard on normal, but that's just a me that's a me problem. That's not an everyone problem. I mean this technically that makes it more accessible having difficulties like this, but um yeah, the combat's a lot of fun. You literally it, it's themed like it, it's kind of almost like a post the setting is like a post apocalypse. It has like a lot of like destroyed buildings and sewer systems and like uh like underground like subway systems it almost reminds me a lot about of like the fallout theme like something was, like that yeah I was, I was about to say that kind of reminds me of like when you're going through like the wars and seas of one of the fall games yeah so it, it it's kind of got an interesting like um theme with that like i haven't seen a souls like that's kind of set in that aesthetic essentially so all the weapons are kind of they don't seem like they're very futuristic. Like they're kind of also themed like that. Like maybe like the 1950s, 1960s. So we're not, you don't have like ray guns or like very futuristic looking guns. Like right now I have like a pistol, which kind of looks like a world war. It's almost like world war two weapons, maybe like a little bit more advanced like that. So you're not getting like, you know, a mini gun or something like that. You're getting more like a semi-auto rifle or like a, a double barrel shotgun. Okay. Um, and then your melee weapons are, they're you know very basic stuff kind of a little bit more like a uh what's the word i'm looking for like uh kind of like mad max like that kind of like post apocalypse where they're taking like scraps of whatever they like got rust, yeah yeah rusty like, like, rust, yeah like rustic weapons where just like, like yeah, yeah I, I think almost like scrap metal which is yeah just, you know, scrap stuff together yeah right like my character, I have basically a 
it's almost like the buzzsaw axe, like the uh, Psycho would have in Borderlands, like the razor blade that's or the buzzsaw that's on the top, but it's on a handle essentially, so it's like an axe. But then okay. another one of the classes starts with a rust blade, which is just like kind of like a sword, but it's rusty and has a little. The hilt is more like scrap metal. And I think the other melee weapon was like a two-handed big hammer, and I think it might have like electrical properties or something. Okay. Uh, I did just gloss over this, but there are classes, which I thought is cool. It seems like it essentially affects your skills you get, as well as kind of like the build of your character. So there was like, one's a hunter, which is about damage. There was one that was like, kind of like your heavy or your your defense oriented, like you can take more hits. You had like big armor. And then the class I picked w was like a medic class, because I figured if this is like a Souls game, I kind of would like to have more heals, because I'm not bad at Souls games, but I'm just kind of dumb. Like, I'll get hit by a lot of moves that I probably shouldn't have, so I'm like, I should just have the heal. And uh, how you basically use your abilities is you get a lot of abilities as you play through the game. I'm very early in it, so I don't have too many yet. But basically for each one of your guns, you put an ability on there, and then it has a cooldown which will fill up over time or if you just, you know, slay enemies or complete little quests or whatnot. And they're basically just like magic. Like, the healing ability I have is I it takes like two seconds to cast and I pop a big ring of healing area of effect for me and any of my teammates because this game is co-op as well. Um, and then the other ability I had, which is... It's called, like, the Hunter's Mark, which it will mark enemies with a certain amount of range. And the, like, critical chance of... Or the chance of dealing a critical on them is, like, doubled or increased by a certain percentage. So there are other ones. Like, I have another one that, like, spawns, like, a decoy, which will attract enemies. Because you get swarmed pretty easily. Uh, there was another one which, like, makes my bullets shoot, like, fire damage. Which deal, like, a ton of additional damage and birding effects. It seems really interesting and has a lot of variety. Like I said, I'm very early in the game, so, like, I don't really know how much it changes. Like, I haven't seen any new weapons yet. I found new armor and, like, rings, but I'm really curious to get, like, a new, like, gun or, like, a new melee weapon. Um, The the game honestly didn't seem that hard, though. Like I said, I'm, I'm used to playing these Souls-like games, but just having guns, like, in a Souls game like that, it kind of makes fighting enemy is pretty easy and I haven't really had like a I feel like the uh the pacing hasn't been the best like I've I, just now I'm starting to fight like enemies which I consider kind of tough but other than that they're pretty much everything's dying in like two or three shots or like they're all like pretty pushover enemies I only even fought one boss so far and the boss was okay but like I was like this will probably be a common enemy type like in a few levels from now um what else do I want to say? The story seems interesting. Uh, you're kind of like... So the enemies, I forget if I mentioned this, but they're all like plants. It's almost like evil yeah. root creatures are like attacking you. Yeah. And I, I think it's kind of interesting. Like I was almost thinking deeper about it. I'm like, I wonder if this is like the earth trying to be like, yo, humans ruin the earth and they want to fight back or something like that. Um, but yeah, like you're kind of going through these different levels and trying to get more people to help you understand this and basically defeat this ultimate evil of this the, these like root and plant enemies so that seems pretty cool it it seems kind of linear but i'm not sure uh, again because i'm pretty early in the game i only played like two hours but you go from level to level uh some levels have like a mini boss some levels just have li literally an entrance and an exit each level has like one bonfire type save point where you can always fast travel back to your home hub base in your base there's like your there's a lot of npcs you can talk to there's like a your uh what's the word i'm looking for your blacksmith there's like a character that can make you the mods for your weapons like the heal or the the spotting bonus uh okay. over, overall it seems like just a really solid like game and i i really like what's going on there there's a lot of good like little touch or little like details that i liked as you upgrade your your guns and your uh, like the wep the melee weapons, they actually change like appearance slightly. Like they add like effects onto the rifle or the uh, the pistol. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say about it. Uh, overall, that I I'm just really enjoying the game and excited to see 
what else awaits in the future, I guess. Cool. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Uh, but with that being said, I, I think we're done. I think we're ready to wrap this one up. Already? Man. Yeah, over already, right? Actually, it's been about almost, yeah, over two and a half hours. I think it's a... That sounds about <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, All right. Oh, wait, before we go and do our oh, plugs, oh. we have a question this forget. week, right? Yes, I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me. I'm I'm clearly an idiot, and I can't remember this. <laughs> no, it's okay. So, I was just rambling for a while. It was very boring. <laughs> okay, so, I, so I'll have to read this out. So this this question comes from a... Uh, a friend of the Clutcher's Vault on Instagram, uh, Casual Yugi Stuff. And his question is, I guess, relating to both. And it's, uh, it's a bit of a personal question, I guess, for us. What made you want to start your YouTube channel? And, uh, Corey, do you want to take it away? Or do you need like, a couple minutes to think about the answer? Uh, I'll start off here. I, I might, I, I don't really have a, a formal, like, statement that I'm ready to prepare. So mind you if I do a little uh and eyeing. I mean, I do that a lot as it is, but... I think it makes it more authentic because you really are, you know... Just thinking history. on the spot, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know, like, I I always wanted to do something with YouTube for a while. I mean, back in the day, I used to have a, a YugiTube channel, which was... It was alright. I was relatively successful there. I was putting videos out, multiple videos out weekly. I had, like, Almost 300 subscribers, not maybe like 270, 280. It was pretty close. Um, but yeah, I always, I, I always really liked gaming ever since I was like, oh god, like probably 10 or 11. And I always knew I wanted to do something with that. And I decided to make the podcast. And I knew I always had ideas for. I mean, my YouTube channel, I don't really have anything on there besides the podcast. But I, I do have ideas, maybe in the future, to pursue other gaming videos not just like let's plays but like actually looking at the medium or like maybe like sharing a story from my past or something like that but i don't know it, it's just I, I think it's a fun hobby that i like to share like stories with people and experiences and kind of like build a community i, I mm -hmm. follow a ton of people who content create and i think it's you know like it is a fun hobby and honestly like it is just work that i enjoy doing and liking you know, it's it's an art form, if you will. That's yeah. that's pretty much it. I don't got much more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I also kind of just want to make it my career. Like, I would love to one day do this for a living and make some sort of income. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a dream. To, yeah. To, to do what you love for a living. Yeah. Exactly. What about you, Mike? Um. Well... It's funny. Uh, I was going to piggyback off what you said. Like, it is like work that's fun, and I also do enjoy it. Like, I love to create things, so it does. It, it, even though it can work out, take you know, sometimes. It, even like for me, when when I, when I do some of my videos, like they're again, I don't do these very often. But, like when I do like my longer videos, they're like in depth and like can go like twenty five minutes or longer. It, it can take up a good amount of time doing the the editing, but yeah, I just really enjoy it. But Ultimately, it, it started off in high school. I joined a, a film club in high school. I, me and some of my friends would actually like get like our video cameras and and shoot our own like, little our own little like like, like like funny skits. Like we were, we actually were inspired by the uh, like many other YouTubers and start, started doing this. People on YouTube started doing like skits and funny videos before we did. I think Smosh is one of the oldest ones, like guys that just did goofy videos on YouTube, and so we started doing that. We would just make funny skits, and like oh, it was actually, it was great. a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, we actually would like for because for it was actually like an official club in, in high school. So we actually got like one of our auditorium, not, not an auditorium, but it was like a study hall area with a giant projector screen, and we had that for like an hour and a half, and we could like show the videos that we were working on and just laugh and like have a good time. We That's bring super cool. In there. It was awesome. I wish I did. I, I did it like junior or senior year. I, I wish it was four years, but it was awesome. And then uh, I stopped doing that when I went to college, obviously. But uh, and even during that, I had I had a YouTube channel. It's 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 on YouTube right now. If anybody wants to watch it, it's it's really really bad. It's called Super Serap Three. That's my high school YouTube channel, and it has most of my videos. Some of them are 
Like some of them are cartoons that I drew. Some of them are just really little funny skits. Some of them were actual Spanish projects because, like, my, I love my Spanish teacher. I had her for the last three years of of high school, and she would love it when for some of your Spanish projects, it wouldn't just be like a book report. It was like, no, here, I'll, you can make a video if you want. So we did like, like you have to, you have to watch it for yourself. But so it was, it was that was great. I had a good time making all these. When I went to college, I just stopped doing it. And uh, it wasn't until like a couple, like, gosh, like a year and a half ago when my fiance Amanda said that she wanted to start a YouTube channel of her own. She wanted to start a YouTube channel and make it like, you know, I think she says she's, you know, she has a lot to talk about and she thinks she'd be cool. It, it, it would be cool to try to be famous on YouTube. And I really tried to push her like, yeah, like, just do it. Like most people on YouTube, they, they just start, they just start talking to the camera and put it on YouTube. And who knows if you had, if you get an audience, you know, go for it. And I, I think it kind of just, she really didn't pursue that. And I thought, well, you know, I used to do a YouTube channel. So let me, I don't know. I just kind of had a crazy idea to say, let me try it again. And so I just started talking about like, you know, things I liked and mainly it was collectibles because over the last like, you know, eight years, I've acquired a lot more of my collection. Like I, I, I built it up so much and I've learned so much that, sorry, with my phone. Uh, like I learned so much, and I felt like cool. I'd be kind of cool to share that with people, and maybe I will develop an audience. And even though, like, I started, I started off with like a couple of videos, and I got like, gosh, people. I'm sorry, my my, my computer like dings whenever I get like a message on my my phone. Um, anyway, um, so I I learned so much over the years, and I wanted to, maybe it'd be kind of cool if I can get like a following going. Who knows? And I obviously started off really slow. I had like ten followers for like the first six months, or like ten subscribers for the first six months. But I didn't really care because it was just fun to do that. Like it, again, it, it's like I love to create things. I love and I love making videos, even though they started off really like crappy. I slowly got back into the swing of things where I started to do like like decent quality with my editing and stuff, and putting more care into the videos. And that's when I realized I, I learned this later. Kind of like what you were saying, how not only do you want to build a community to follow you, but you then become part of the community where, like, you you meet other content creators, you know, you're not in person, right. but, like, but through YouTube and through other forms of social media, like Twitter, and it, it, mainly for me, it's Instagram and YouTube, where, I, you know, you, you, you make friends this way, and you make connections, you make contacts, people can share their experiences, they, they can give you tips and tricks of the trade, to help, and it's all about helping. You know, it's all about helping each, each other grow as content creators. That's kind of like what I've I learned this over the last like year. That that's kind of like what the best part about doing this is. It started off as me trying to relive my high school times of like cause I I like I like to film and create things and make I, I like to make people laugh. I like to make I like for people to learn things. I actually was going to I was considering taking film in college, but ended up going to engineering. Go figure. But uh. So yeah, I mean, I, I I started it because I just like to create things. I like to make people laugh at things about things that I'm familiar with, and I continue to do this because of the community that I'm now that I'm now a part of, and that also coincides with you know working alongside you, Corey. You know, it's just also about sharing stuff you love, right? Like mm -hmm. I want to show people, like, look at this cool video game. Isn't it neat? Yeah, that's kind of the cool thing about Let's Plays. You can, like, I mean, I know maybe more so for me with the old stuff. You might not be familiar with some of these old games. Like, here, Corey, let's do a Let's Play of some old games that you never heard of. And I, and also, the inverse is true, where you can say, well, Mike, let's, I'll show you some of the modern games. Let's do it. And I, I, get, I get to experience those, some of these games, you know, alongside you. Like, technically, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as you do a Let's Play, like, I'm, and I'm really looking forward to that, where you can start. I can watch you play some games and that's true. It, yeah, it's, yeah. It's great. It's great. It's great just to share that, to share that love, you know, of well, the game or whatever. Also, just let everyone know while he was talking, I did look up your channel. I found it. Oh, you found it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> some of the videos are actually pretty. Oh. <laughs> for, for anybody, for the listeners who wants to want to look at this, if you go to Super Serap 3, it's my old channel. One of the, I have I have a two parter I've I've I made a parody 
of Citizen Kane, and it's called Citizen Sugar Kane. There's part <laughs> one and part two. It's actually a combination of four, like one. It, it, it was for an English class. It's a combination of the movie Citizen Kane, the movie Do the Right Thing. It's a Spike Lee movie. Antigone, which I think is a, uh, is that a Greek play? I forget. And this Chinese movie called Raise the Red Lamp. It's a parody of all. So it's it, it, it's it's completely out there and ridiculous. But it was for an English project in my school. So it's a parody of all four stories mixed to one. If you want to just watch it and <laughs> you might want to hang yourself after watching how stupid it is. But like. <laughs> And I only had like five of my friends <laughs> with me, so they all had to play multiple. Roles. <laughs> like, it's like, dude, dude, I, I, dude so what I the just, hell? I'm looking at your views. You got like unlocking the door is like 12k. Like what the what the hell is oh, that? Oh, that that was that was the last video I ever made. I think I was in. My friend said, "Dude, I can unlock <laughs> from the outside." I'm like, "Oh, really?" So I filmed it and I just put it on YouTube. And it has like 12,000 views. I didn't know it's 12,000 <laughs> views. That the one Spanish sitcom has. 1500 the black oh, really? sheep 2 silence of the lambs says 5000 oh my gosh <laughs> that's great oh my gosh well wow, this sugar cane is almost 2000 views and it, it, it was funny i can't get onto this channel i forgot the password so long ago and now it's just you hate to see it happen yeah oh my gosh look at all these videos some of them are oh, this one's pretty funny the chase is on that, that one's pretty funny and then these are all like my stupid cartoons, where like I I, I actually drew cartoons, and they're really really low quality. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna ask, you know. No, you don't have to ask. Gotta, we gotta... all we all tried to to be on new grounds, you know. New grounds. Oh, um, even just look at these little pixelated and fuzzy everything is. <laughs> the, old, the, the old camera that I had. That's why it's fuzzy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I'm just. I'm sorry. This is very nostalgic. Looking at this old channel. Oh man. Damn. Who the hell was watching this? Unlock the door. It's got like no likes. I thought it was gonna be riddled with comments. Unfortunately, yeah. not. Man. Oh man, we're going down a rabbit hole here. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's funny. I also took a film class when I was in high school. It's fun. I remember one of our film projects is we had to take a movie. That was like violent and pretty much like, you know, make it okay for an everyone audience or whatever you call it. PG. Yeah. And uh we did uh oh my god, what's that movie called? Um it's the one with uh Liam Neeson when he's like fighting all the wolves. Oh uh The Grey. Gray. The Grey, right? Yeah, yeah. So we did <laughs> we did a remake of the hit like, you know, PG and uh, I had the starring role of the wolf. <laughs> You're the wolf. So I I took this hoodie I had that had like this like gray like f fur inside of it, and I just flipped it inside out, and I just got all, all in on all fours and pretended to be a wolf and mauled people. It's great. Sounds like a good. Time. I wish I had that video to watch right now. I'd probably laugh at it. <laughs> also, I remember there was like I had to do a project. I th our first video project was. We had to make something with our name and use, like, objects with each letter from our name. Like, you know, C stands for whatever. Comedy. I don't know. And I remember I had no idea what to do for Y. So I made it yummy. And I made, like, a Y out of, like, gummy bears or gummy worms. And uh, my film teacher didn't like that. She thought it was, like, too perver perverted. Looking back on it, I can see it. Okay. <laughs> You're just, just like, I, all right, I'm, sure. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just picturing you as a wolf, and I, I'm just laughing at it. I'm That's sorry. fine. No, I no, it's good. That. It's good. Think of that in my head. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Ruff, I, I know. Hi, Mike. I'm Corey. Ruff. <laughs> hey, uh, if you want to see uh, videos of me pretending to be a wolf, you can check out Level with Me, the channel. That's all you got to search. Just Level with Me, probably on YouTube. I mean, that's where you'll be listening to this podcast from now on. So from now on, yeah. you're right there. Just just hit the subscribe button. You're good. Smash the bell, as the kids say. Yeah, it takes maybe, two seconds, guys. Come on. Maybe you'll see some uh, some let's plays. I, I got a, a couple in the hopper for Remnant 
from the ashes. Got a few parts for that. That'll be going up soon. Uh, the Clubhouse Games video should be up also relatively soon. The first part, we're probably going to do more of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you can also, you know, just promote the podcast. That always helps. Also, if you have a question, like, uh, what was the name of the person who submitted that last uh, question? That was uh, Jamie from Casual Yugi Stuff. There you go. So if you want to be like Jamie and submit a question, you can send it in to levelwithmepodcast at gmail.com. Let me make sure that's right, because I feel like... I think it's something different, actually, on the Gmail. I feel like that could have been one of the issues we were oh, at. No. Well, actually, uh, Casual Yugi Stuff did send the message on Instagram. Yeah. So if you guys do want to contact us that way, that's fine, too. I mean, I'm going to be trying to do stories and, like have like you know you can yeah i should do that more yeah i mean either way is fine with us you just send us just contact just contact us and you know then we'll we'll do our best to answer your question you know and and i was right it is level with me podcast at gmail.com okay, the, the question can be about anything there it's just supposed to be like you know a lot of fun yeah so. just uh just to contribute to the contribute to the podcast you know yeah yeah it doesn't have to do with like video games or collectibles, literally about anything. What's our shoe size? Uh, ten and a half. I guess you need a new question. Um, I'm too, too embarrassed to give you the answer to, my, uh, to that question. Good. No. <laughs> um, you know what they say small shoes. It, it, if one day you would like to watch me again, go live on a, a website called Twitch. You could follow me there at Game Bro Corey. You would also subscribe to my YouTube, although I have no idea what I'm going to do with that at this point. Uh, check out my Twitter and Instagram. I use those way more. You get updates when I go live or when I a, a video will go live on the Level With Me channel and stuff like that. The podcast. All that goodies. Uh, Game Bro Corey everywhere. Mike, what about you? Uh, just like uh, it, just like Corey, if you want, you can catch me uh, on Instagram and YouTube. It's uh, The Collector's... Actually, I think... Uh, I actually just learned this recently. I think technically on my Instagram, it's not The... It's like... The underscore collectors underscore vault. So I'm sorry. We'll leave a link in the. We'll leave a link in the description of the YouTube of the YouTube video to our, all of our uh, all of our pages and stuff. But basically, if you find me if you, if you find me on YouTube, then you can easily find me on Instagram. There's links there. It's the collectors vault three words. And uh, yeah, if if you guys want to come watch, I talk mainly about collectibles, card games, like Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh, all that nerdy fun stuff. So uh, yeah, guys. Please feel free to come over and, and, and check it out. You know? Flea market and, finds. Uh, that, that's my latest thing I've been doing. Where I actually do record myself going to flea markets and I uh, make a couple of jokes here and there of the things I see. Uh, I found I found Waldo in this last episode that, that I made. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Uh, now, now you got me hooked. I'm definitely gonna watch that when we're <laughs> done. <laughs> um. I should totally do a parody of that, like just upload it to my channel or something. Like, all right, we're at a flea market today. I don't know what no, we're looking should, for. You should do a pandemic version where you just look, hey, we're in, we're in my house. Let's we'll see what we can find. <laughs> like, you're like raiding Megan's like closed door. We're in stuff. this guy. Know. We're in this person's house. That's totally not mine. <laughs> Your neighbor's house. Look at this idiot's shirt. Who wears this dorky crap? <laughs> that, that actually would be would be gold. I think. <laughs> Um, if you want to anyway. hear, if you want to hear more of this gold, you could also check out my friend's channel. That's Loudstone Entertainment. Me and him are doing a Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Let's Play over there, and I believe he's going to be uploading more episodes over the week. I'm sure I'm going to probably be making content with him also in the near future. So we'll probably do another like Let's Play, or maybe I'll hop on their <laughs> podcast. I don't know. I don't know. So that's a uh, Loudstone Entertainment on YouTube. They have. They got, like, you know, every social thing. But just check out their YouTube first. You know, see if you like the content. Uh, but with that being said, we're, we're all good. The podcast is done. I'm going to stamp my screen with a big done stamp. Yeah, perfect. Send it to the press. Send them to Wall Street. You know, they, they got to listen to something, right? Only the finest podcast here. It's like an aged, aged wine. You lost me again, Corey. You're right. This is a fine podcast, but <laughs> you lost me at Wall Street. How, how do I get this ink off my monitor? Oh, Corey, come on. Is just, this... just, hit, just, just, hit the hit, just hit the backspace button. Yeah, where's the undo on this uh, the stamp? <laughs> 
Where's the undo on this podcast? Am I right? Hey oh. Oh. All right, later everyone. <laughs> See you guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a good one. Have fun. Toodles. <laughs>